back again. West March Workshop. I've been grinding my whole life, Nineball. Now I'm talking about. Okay, so season's three here and there's no need to fear playing Barb. I'm so sure that I've got perfect gear and my friends all play classes where I give them passes because most of their Paragon levels are tragic. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, hold on. Yo. I need blues, give me magic, I turn into dust Cause these braces from mouth is a must I'm fully equipped in all ancients But don't you go getting impatient I'm climbing them greater rifts I know you've been waiting Actually, hold on, there's something else I wanna talk about Yeah, her complaints about cheats Now their band are rolled back They like working at Walmart, your prospects are whack Not sorry for hating, you deserve what you got Cause these blood shirts are free, yeah man, I got a lot <laughs> You know, alright, let me lay off them Anyway Back to the facts that you need to know. Westmarch Workshop, number one Diablo show. So let's get into it. Alrighty then. Uh, yeah, that was my intro for this week, episode 48. We're climbing up there. Mm-hmm, we're to, definitely. To Hellfire and Back is the name of this one. And that will become apparent at some point during this episode. But as you could tell from the intro, there are just a lot of things to talk about, despite there being a lack of news, um, you know, from from things happening in game to ideas happening outside of the game to, mm -hmm. to actions and repercussions received, etc. We're gonna talk about it all. So, my good friend Nineball, how are you doing, man? Good to see you. I'm again. doing pretty good. It's good to see you too, man. How about yourself? You know, I'm doing well. There have been uh, there have been some things that have happened since we last convened, mm -hmm. but yeah, we can uh, we can get into that at some point, I suppose. Yeah, some some tales of woe and sorrow, from what I'm told. A little bit of woe, a little bit of woe. Yep. Oh, it seems this is this is going to be two weeks back to back. Sad. Yeah. <laughs> Are we losing credibility or gaining credibility when these things happen? I don't know. It's hard to say. If, you know, given given the community, probably probably gain. Yeah. yeah, let's let's go with that. Yeah, gain gaining credibility because because they're so cool and hardcore. Mm -hmm. And I guess that uh, is a fair lead in to talk about the weekend gaming. I will lead off by stating, I died. My barbarian uh, was doing pretty great, doing really well. Um, I had cleared last I checked a greater of forty seven uh, with little to no problems and was looking forward to uh, experimenting with some different setups and things like that. Was speed farming a whole bunch of greater 40s and I actually got to the point where I speed farmed it so fast um, I made a greater 50 key on the you know on the Urshi choices you can level up your gems you can upgrade your keystone and mm -hmm. so when you clear it, I believe like faster than three minutes or maybe faster than two minutes 30 you go up to 10 levels so I was like ooh, a 50 that's cool and I was like you know what I think I'll make more of those um, so I tried to do something a little experimental in the trials, and that is where I mm -hmm. died. So it actually feels even worse than normal, because I know that trials will be removed at some point in the future. So yeah. at some point in the future, some defunct, non-existent feature will have destroyed that beautiful <laughs> barb. And I'm just like, I, there was no need for it. I wasn't even going to do 50s anytime soon, so. Mm -hmm. um, but we That's rebuilt... Nice. Rome, Rome was not built in a day or mm -hmm. two weeks or the first two weeks of season three. So expect some deaths here and there. Rebuilt it back up. Uh, and I think it's, I think it's looking all right. Yeah. Yeah. And it just, it, it's part of, part of the experience. Mm -hmm. You know, you always go through, you never want to, but you always have to, in the back of your mind, realize that the, uh, the character is going to die. Yeah. And that's, mm -hmm. and that's like you always say, right? Like a hardcore character is created to die or something like that forget your famous quote you, you know i forgot my famous quote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, it's a really good one if we ever recall it yeah something something along the lines it's like there's only uh, there's only one thing that all hardcore characters share in common they all die yep. it's death is the goal of every hardcore character or something along, something like that that sounds good to me yeah yeah what is dead can never die i don't know people like to throw that around for some reason how how can you kill that which has no life? Ooh, deep thoughts. Yeah. Um, but with every tale of woe, there is also a tale of of happiness on the other side because that's the the yin and yang of things. Mm -hmm. And I'll let you take a, a bit of the work on this one, but I will just introduce it by saying that we did it. 
We got the speed racer done. Yes, that last we week, did. Last week after the end of the show. Yeah, it was, that was, you know, we were going and talking about on the show. You know, it's like, should we go and do it? Or maybe it was we were talking about it during the after show. It's just, should we should we give it a shot? You know, it's like, why not? Mm -hmm. So just kind of, you know, gather up a couple people that were there um, three days in uh, Altair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was just some clan members that, you know, uh, three days we'd already been discussing with. And he, he had, you know, put some attempts in with us previously in season one. Um and then, you know, Altair was just there, uh, hanging out in raid call. And was like, we need a fourth person. You know, it, 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 it can't, it, it cannot hurt regardless of if you've ever tried it or not. So we went and uh, went and, you know, threw him an invite and just gave it a shot. And lo and behold, we, we went through and did it. Got so all, all of my, uh, bragging of, uh, I'll show you all how it's done. Um, <laughs> Ended up, I didn't lie, apparently. You did not lie. Um, no. Nope. So. That part kind of makes me mad that you literally came in. It was your first attempt of the season. And you're just like, I'm going to, this is easy. Why are you guys failing at this? And <laughs> But that's just, yeah. that's just the luck of the nine ball, huh? That That is. Because there, there was a couple of times, especially once we were in, um, once we hit Battlefield of Eternity, it, it's like I had a homing beacon or something like that. So it's I found I started going off in one direction and found one of the siege runes that was like the furthest off on the other side of the map and I just went straight towards it. <laughs> and then when we got into Pandemonium Fortress, I just took every single right turn and so we we got through Pandemonium Fortress one in like a minute and a half. It's re it's really so, cool when it just starts to click like that. Yep. So I definitely recommend to anyone who hasn't yet attempted it, get a group together. It's actually a lot of fun just because you, there's the high pressure level of it. You're always watching the time. Um, mm -hmm. You're talking to each other and it gets it does get kind of emotional when you're like getting down to the wire and you kind of feel like you're getting close, but you're not sure. And you're like, come on, man, take the right turn, like TP on me, TP on me. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there's a video up on that if you guys want to check it out. Same place we post these uh, episodes. So definitely give it a give it a look. See if you want some tips, hints, tricks. Yeah, it's, and it is shorter than one of our shows because by nature <laughs> it's only an hour in length. So that's I didn't even think about that. That's actually hilarious. Yep. So that's why they pay me the big bucks. There you go. Big brain. Yep. <laughs> big brain, big bucks. So how was yep. your week in gaming, sir? Uh, that was that pretty much that was the uh, the crowning achievement. So my week in gaming kind of peaked immediately after last week's episode. Um, as bad as that sounds, but no <laughs> thing, things at least on the real life side. You know, I'm um, in between jobs at the moment, so I've been spending a lot of my a lot of my time going through filling out applications and just trying to find you know what's what's the the next chapter in my professional career there. Mm -hmm. um, so I haven't been able to de uh, devote too much time uh, to the game lately, but yep, yeah, uh, still go getting on here and there. You know, running a couple rifts, running some bounties, just uh, try still trying to put my Natalia set together. I have a lot of really good pieces. It's just more, I you know, I need to farm up. Uh, enough forgotten souls to actually just you know go and re-enchant everything as, as I said last week I, I used up all of my white mats all of my forgotten souls <laughs> re-enchanting my backup gear after my first demon hunter died and then you know lost the second one so we, we, uh, we've got back to back to back deaths on the uh, the show here so I, ho I hope that we break this chain but I don't want to have this discussion next week <laughs> I don't want to see you in my office again <laughs> don't don't let it happen again <laughs> i'm hoping um, that we're just getting it out of the way early so we can cruise through the rest of the season oh definitely just get, just get it done now and then no more deaths for the rest of season three that'd be that'd be great wonderful yep but uh how about yourself uh besides you know going through obviously you had the uh the speed racer achievement you had the death there how have you been recovering from that um, the recovery went pretty well. I went through my gear and saw uh, my stash, I, su I should say, and saw kind of what was left uh, in the in the shambles there. But because I had been farming pretty decently um, prior to that, just the power of the barb to carve through T6, which is something we'll talk about a little bit later, um, makes it so that you can really just clear out a whole bunch of those uh, rifts pretty quickly. And then that in turn feeds you more... Uh, keys for the trials and then you know that in turn feeds you a whole bunch of uh whatever trial or whatever greater rift level you want to make so um the mm -hmm. 40s were right around that sweet spot um of what i could farm pretty quickly 
and gave you a great chance for ancient items because as most people should know at this point the higher up you go in greater rifts the more likely the drops that you get at the end of those greater rifts um, are to be ancient and it also there's a bit of a correlation as well as the higher up you go in the greater rifts um, the more legendaries tend to drop and that's mm -hmm. not to say every single time because there are there have been times where i've done a greater 40 and i got zero legendaries but more often than not you're probably gonna yeah. average three or four or so yeah th those are definitely the rare instances mm -hmm. when you when you come away with nothing yeah i i this actually reminds me of back in season one when uh dat mods was going through and like doing like the math hammering and running like chain running four-man group greater rift 35s you know to try and see how many blood shards am i getting is it worth farming greater rifts that was the question back in the season one mm -hmm. is it actually worth farming greater rifts for something other than leveling up your gems is it actually worth doing to try and get gear and obviously the power creep has been so much now that the answer is just yes you know it's like you run rifts just to get trial keys like the torment six you got to run them just to get trial keys or to get crafting mats it's really it's honestly worth talking about actually because if you look at um what has occurred with greater rifts throughout the course of the last three seasons so you know season one season two and our current season um, they've been slowly getting buffed. Um, mm -hmm. If you look from the changes uh, from just the introduction of Season 1 to that patch that came right at the tail end, um, that was when they bumped up, or I think it might have even been a hot fix along the way, but they bumped up the rewards for Blood Shards coming from Greater Rifts, because that was one of the mm -hmm. major complaints early on was, you know, it takes me longer to do an equivalent Greater Rift than um, T6, and I'm not getting more uh, Blood Shard reward for it. It seems kind of crazy. So they bumped mm -hmm. that up. And then in season two, of course, we saw everyone blitzing crazy Paragon levels, going higher oh, than yeah. you know they had in such a short season as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was clear that the experience formula had been buffed up for greater rifts. And now, yep. and now we're at the point where you get you get much more experience, especially when you're in a group, um, and you can clear them quickly. Um, you're getting a ton more blood shards, and then you're getting um, a decent amount of guaranteed legendaries to, to some degree. So it, it really is kind of the place to be right now, um, mm -hmm. at least early in the season when you're not you know, necessarily pushing up against those really high progression greater rifts, because those are the ones that aren't going to be efficient, and those are the ones where you might as well um, be back in T6 or just speed running um, some of those lower tier greater rifts. Yeah, so it definitely is one of those, you know, a lot of people can go through and clear you know, the greater if 40 in like just a couple minutes. Like it's not even hard anymore. Yeah. You know, these people that are going and like, you know, we we're getting, you know, uh, what is it? We've had some people go through clear through mid fifties. What's the, what's the current highest gra uh, greater rift at the moment for uh, the season in general? Yeah. yeah. Last I had checked, I saw some 53s on the um, barbs. I think I had seen 54 for DHs, and I haven't checked uh, recently, so they could be even higher at this point. But yeah, mid-50s for sure. Yeah, I think I saw a Demon Hunter in the season that had cleared 55. Nice. I have to go through and uh, check it. I know non like non seasonal, like the the normal rifts, it's just insane. Like creeping up to the 60s. Yeah, I think they actually uh, they had on the the normal soft core they have a demon hunter that has cleared sixty. Wow, uh, just absolutely crazy. Yeah, and I know there are some because um, I saw Jake kind of talking about it in Twitter. Some four man groups that are clearing you know sixty nine seventy. So there are going to be some mm -hmm. crazy high level gems. I actually would be curious to know just how many blood shards you get from a, a sixty nine or a seventy clear. Yeah, so you just instantly go full. <laughs> mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and chat saying fib barbs are at fifty six now makes sense, um, and I guess this is so uh, you know since we kind of have a whole bunch of different topics, this is one where I want to jump in and just insert something because it's gonna before I interrupt it, it was going to mm -hmm. flow into the conversation. But um, one of the things that we discovered uh, just a couple of days ago was that there was a bit of an exploit running around, uh, wherein people were. The best way to describe it is that there was some leveraging of effects on items combined with legendary gems to make just this insane area of effect damage happen that shouldn't. And so I'll go into mm -hmm. some specifics. Uh, it has been hotfixed, by the way, so if you attempt to do this, it won't work. Um, they basically just shut down Death's Bargain, and you're like, what is Death's Bargain? Uh, it's a Act 5 bounty uh, legendary. It's pants, and mm -hmm. its effect is that it turns your life per second into a damage dealing aura basically um and so what people were doing and what this monk in particular did it was a hardcore monk that suddenly shot up and had cleared like greater rift 56 
in like 12 minutes and the next person below him was like 51 or something and what mm -hmm. was what was great was i think it was either his 54 or 55 clear was snapshotted someone saw it on the leaderboards took pictures etc it was a four minute clear for 54 oh. or 55 so of you, course wow. yeah. of course that looks so fishy something well. wrong is going there right and he had a shield on because you know it snapshots your character when you clear the greater rift yeah. So if you hover over his time, um, there was like he had a shield on, and people were like, "That just seems sketchy as hell." Because flying dragon is kind of the um, cookie cutter weapon that they're using at this point. Mm -hmm. So people were peculiar. People were uh, kind of you know peculiar about what was happening, and I guess it was figured out through Reddit investigation slash someone who knew the person. He was using a Rogar's huge stone um, combined with the molten wildebeest gizzard because we're talking about life per second here to get the life per second numbers just crazy high. And mm -hmm. what Rogar's huge stone does is it increases your uh, life per second as your life goes down. And so I guess what he was doing was manipulating his life a little bit so that he would get way down. And then mm -hmm. it would like snapshot a shield uh, with the Molten Wildebeest Gizzard. That was like cr like an integer formula thing. Math stuff happened that went really wrong. And the shield <laughs> yeah. was like 222 like trillion, trillion, trillion uh, mm -hmm. like that and it was never going to be broken by anything so he was just running through the rift and everything was dying instantly from the uh from the death's bargain uh, mm -hmm. legendary power pretty crazy yeah and so that's one of those ones that i'm sure that after they went and cleared like the 54 and four minutes and they realized oh shit that that 56 clear was probably them you know going clearing everything getting the greater rifts boss to spawn and then exiting and waiting for eight minutes mm -hmm. you know <laughs> all right i have yeah. to believe that it's like oh man i gotta make this thing look semi-legit somehow yep so yeah i threw up on screen here just a couple of hot fixes um you can see as of april 28th which was yesterday death's bargain has been temporarily disabled and there, i guess there was also an issue where the combination of rogar's huge stone and molten wildebeest gizzard uh would occasionally cause the game to crash so something else mm -hmm. going on there too but that's an upcoming hot fix yeah, that one probably just is no one ever experienced before, but it's just probably the, the Wildebeest Gizzard, you can get to such insane levels of life per second, and then the scaling from the Rogar's Huge Stone, it probably hits an integer mark that causes the game to crash because it, it like it overflows mm. and it, it hits a point where it's like this is the highest that it can go and now it wants to go higher and then the game crashes if that makes perfect sense then yeah so the whole mm -hmm. thing is kind of tied together yep um it's interesting because we had an issue similar to this if you recall back when uh the auction house was still around and it was mm -hmm. that whole issue where they were trying to increase the amount of gold that we could i think it was sell or yeah it was the limit was moving up to two billion um, and mm -hmm. I guess there was some error where I can't, I wish I could remember it too. This is like Diablo history at this point, but yeah. you would sell it, but there would be an error. So you would get it back, but the sale would go through. So you were like doubling or tripling. Um, and people were just abusing the crap out of that. So I think that was the one time that we saw a global rollback, right? That was mm -hmm. what happened with that. Yeah. Uh, the people going through and exploiting that mechanic. So that way they could, you know, I don't remember whether it was actually like, something it's like canceling the sale at the same time you know it's like having the corroboration there but yeah it was yeah. definitely something where they would they would get the gold and the item back and but the other person never actually gave any money right they like there was yeah there were things being made but nothing lost it was going against exactly. the laws of nature man yeah <laughs> can't do it cotton <laughs> So yeah, that was uh, just a, it funny that some of these bugs are, are still coming back when the numbers are getting so high. And I think one of the things we've talked about in the past is, you know, will there ever be a number crunch? And this kind of seems to be, you know, maybe a little bit of evidence that maybe there should be at some point just because the numbers are getting pretty ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, that was, that was a major concern for World of Warcraft um, going into Warlords of Draenor. They went through and they crunched it. Not so much, you know, for the aspect of, like, the, obviously, they, they never said at any point that we're doing this because of, you know, just integer problems. We're doing it because it just looks weird when you do, you know, like, two billion damage or something along those lines. Where mm -hmm. now that's kind of, you know, commonplace in, in Diablo. And I don't know. I, I, I like seeing the big numbers. Is I it do going too. To be, yeah, is it going to be, is it going to be wonky to go through and just have the numbers scaling? Because it was... 
it wasn't really that much of an issue in D2 just because you never saw the numbers. Right. But with the way that, you know, the hit point scaled and things of that nature, they did it, you know, the numbers were close to what they are now, like in D2. Like, because you would have things which is ridiculous ridiculous amounts of hit points and you could hit you know you even though you know obviously it was the lying character sheet um in d2 but you could have um paladins that were doing like 13 million damage with their hammers you know with the constant concentration auras and such so you had a bunch of like really ridiculous things but back then you know your your builds lived and breathed off of either static field or crushing blow right Static field, oh man, stuff to remember. Things that chunk things down very quickly. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, another topic that I did want to bring up, so staying within things that are happening in the community, this is one you pointed me towards, that there's still ire over this Mordix Brace. I thought we were done with this. I thought so too. <laughs> I thought so too. But uh, yeah, so we have this uh, post that you alerted me to, which I'll throw up on the screen here. And this is Grimaku replying to someone that's complaining, that basically saying that the Unhallowed Essence set seems just as ridiculous in function right now in the live game as mm -hmm. the IK set was going to be combined with Mordex Brace um, back when we were experiencing it during the PTR. Yep. Which to me seems... I don't know, I haven't thought about it long enough because this is something that um, I just only saw today. But... I mean, it, it is a powerful set, but the justification that Grimaku gives kind of makes sense. It's not pushing DHs so far and away from every other class that, like, mm -hmm. it shouldn't be the way that it is. And to, to truth be told, isn't it the Nats set that's truly pushing the DHs, like, way, way up? Yeah, you know, um, at the beginning of the season on Hollow Essence, you know, that is what was all the top clears, but now people are switching over to Natalia's. They've, they've gone through, they've had enough time to grind out the gear, perfect the sets, and just give it a shot, and it is doing ridiculous things. You know, Demon Hunters are kind of leading the leaderboards, as it were, <laughs> um, kind of across the uh, across the class spectrum there. And it's all because of Natalia's. People have like figured it out, and they're you know that's that's what the big thing is. So it is kind of strange seeing someone complaining and comparing it to not the best set. And, like, it really is someone that's kind of just grasping at straws at this point because they're trying to use numbers. You know, they're trying to go through and math hammer it out. So it's like Unhollow Discipline is, like, a 1,500% damage bonus, and this is somehow balanced? <laughs> you know, it's like it's not, it's not even going through and actually, like, looking at the mechanics, mm -hmm. you know, because... With the, the Demon Hunter, yeah, you do some ridiculous damage with Unhollowed Essence, uh, but if you don't kill anything or you don't spawn any health globes for uh, your, your Reaper's Wraps, you're tied down to uh, punishments in bat cooldowns. And if those go down and you haven't pushed anything, you're sitting there you know, hitting a single target with Entangling Shot. And there are a lot of people that were going and pushing that, that Unhollowed Essence up to those top you know, uh, those top greater rift clears in the beginning, they were doing some really cool things, like still using Bane of the Trapped and just being so good about being able to keep Entangling Shot up on multiple targets, and that was their only way of providing slows, was Entangling Shot. It's a single target skill that only will link um, one or two enemies that are close by. And it was just, it was, it was really cool seeing people and how they were able to play at such a fine level in order to get those clears. And, you know, it's just, at this point, it's, it's really just, you know, and even in that same post that uh, Grimiku was going and replying to, they were also complaining about IKs being nerfed from the 500% damage. <laughs> you know, they're, they're, yeah, you know, it's just like one of those ones, it's like they're just looking at it purely from a numbers aspect and not from, you know, a balance or real world um uh, performance aspect like they're not actually looking at it from this is what the numbers were this is where barbs were this is where the other classes were and there you can attribute these five extra greater rift levels just to a single item right. whereas you know no one else can compete even with you know the supposedly overpowered on hollowed essence so that's that's kind of where it's at right now yeah i mean you make a great point when we talk about I guess, so there are two points here from my side. It's 
practicality versus the theoretical and so in theory you're looking at it on paper and you're like okay compare these numbers whatever but in practice it actually operates very differently and i think one of the big things when you talk about practice talk about practice um is looking at the fact that a lot of the dh stuff that you're talking about is conditional you have to have the right conditions in order for that damage to actually uh come to be and a lot of it also that the the original poster actually talked about was you have to have perfect rolls on your discipline across all the slots where it can roll in the first place mm -hmm. so that's multiple slots of your gear already affected and yep. now we're talking about um the the barb stuff and all of that stuff is non-conditional it was literally like you equip this item you get these bonuses flat out like you don't have to you know stay at a certain level of fury you don't have to be in a certain uh surrounding of monsters or whatever it's just flat out 50 percent damage reduction flat out 50 percent damage increase and all the other bonuses that come with having every rune of wrath of the berserker and also all the bonuses that come of just having flat out 500 percent more damage you know mm -hmm. so uh yeah, I think I think it's probably a good lesson in terms of making cross class comparisons where you have to actually play and and go into the the everyday like I guess that old uh, adage of like, you know, walk a mile in this person's shoes cuz you're not going to be able to be able to um talk about it in a in a well man or maybe honestly maybe he has played both and just wanted to kind of mm -hmm. push the math side of it um and make his point without looking at so much of that practicality stuff. But, yeah. From from their post, it seems as if um, you know this player actually has you know been playing uh, Demon Hunter because he comments about you know it's like I hit the entire screen for one point two billion damage. You know how how is that balanced? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But again, very conditional. Yeah, and when you it's also when you go through and you look at it, um, just you know mentioning again that you know Unhallowed Essence isn't even the best gear set for Demon Hunters. Right right now and it's you know there's one person that's taken natalia's and gotten it to greater uh greater of 60 and then the next person is 58 where barbarians you know their top is 58 and then the next person's 57 that that's really really close you know even it's it's two greater rift levels which is what is it is something thereabouts like 35 percent you know like uh hp increase because it's like 16 percent per level or something along those lines sounds right yeah 16 yeah. 13 something like that yeah or actually i think you're right 13 percent because they changed it it's like down to like the 13 percent and then of course the 13 percent on top of the previous 13 percent right. so you know it's it's you know even though it is only two greater rifts it, it is that is some substantial number difference but it still is they're they're good you go through and you look at other classes the crusader and the witch doctors are kind of sitting at 50 there's there's one witch doctor sitting at 58 but you know who knows it probably is because of death of argon who who can <laughs> he, he's like he's an outlier you know yeah, yeah. and I, I guess we should um follow up on that with i'm pretty sure that those people will be removed from the leaderboards and you know have their accounts action because a diablo Diablo and the devs have now set that precedent of, hey, if you try and cheat this game, like stuff will happen to you. You're not getting away with it scot-free. And of mm -hmm. course, that's a very visible, you know, sign of like, you're either going to deal with the cheaters or you're not because this person is clearly at number one unearned. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm hoping we'll see some action on that soon. And also to dovetail back around to it, too, I just wanted to throw this image up where you can see the shield at the bottom left. And that number literally just keeps going. Mm-hmm. Which is just ridiculous. Um, but yeah, so those those outliers are the ones that... And it, I feel like that's the craziest thing, too, is sometimes people will only look at the outliers and just be like, that's that's the reason why. Look at that. That one person <laughs> who pushed this thing so far. Yeah, It's all unbalanced. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'm sure patch 2.3, we'll see more Tooth Bracers make a return, probably just unlocking a, a single rune. Mm-hmm. That, um, that would make the most sense to me. Yep, or just doing some other benefit. Maybe it, it buffs the rune that you have active. You know, maybe it will just double whatever active rune that you have. Who yeah, knows? That could be interesting. Mm -hmm. hmm. But anyway, that that would be a more interesting way of doing it than just unlocking. You know, so that way you always more takes bracer, so you always have like say the fifty percent damage reduction, so you can also run the the one hundred percent damage. You know, something along those lines. Right. 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 Hmm. 
All right. I guess we can move on to another news topic that we had. Uh, we yeah. Go, go ahead. Yeah. No, I was just going to go through and say uh, we have uh, Play Your Way uh, here at the Play Your Way Thursday stream number seven coming up tomorrow. It'll be uh, April 30th over on twitch.tv slash Diablo. It'll be at 4 p.m. Pacific, and they usually run about an hour. That's right. Yeah, and this time it was the uh, the Monk build, who's actually the second place. It was... Uh, <laughs> The wave of light because it was uh, keeping uh, with tradition. Was, yeah, it was just one of those things. Just keeping with tradition. Oh, uh, boy. Wizards do not play in the play your way live stream. So even though the wizard build won, they were unable to make it. I don't get how this keeps happening. Do wizards just have like the most fiercest like political ad campaign? Or like vote for me? You're gonna take this build places, kid. You'll see. And then they're like, by the way, I'm not going to show up, though, if we win. I'm not. Yeah, no. Oh, your vote's wasted. <laughs> yep, it belongs in Grand Theft Auto. Cause it, it is just wasted. Oh, I like that. But yeah, so it's going to be seeing some uh, Monk things going on there, which, you know, especially running off of the last couple patches, Monks have been seeing a lot of love and have been really popular lately. I actually was kind of surprised that this one didn't win in the first place. But then again, I have a special um, place in my heart for Wave of Light. So th this is actually the one that I had voted for myself. Ah, uh, there you go. Yeah, I'm excited to see what happens um, on this one. If you remember the last time, Don Vu, who is going to be the um, Blizzard representative alongside Nevalistis, uh, last mm -hmm. time he was there, they did hardcore. It doesn't look like they're doing hardcore this time. Um, no, I, I don't think so, because the person that submitted it, all, all of their screenshots were normal mode, not hardcore. I gotcha, okay. Um, so there's that. Um, I just like Don Vu in general. I think he's a cool dude, so that should be fun. And also, oh, yeah. Meathead Mikael, um, who is a prominent YouTuber, um, he streams mm -hmm. a little bit, but I don't think that's really the thing that blew up for him. A lot of his YouTube videos get highlights on Diablo fans, etc. Um, and so he's going to be there as well. He said he's going to be playing his Spin to Win Barb, so that'll be fun to kind of see the cross-party stuff going on. I think there are going to be some wizards there as well, too, with Don Vu playing. Yeah, I also kind of like it. Um, I think it was the the Dead Mouse stream was the first time that they did it where they actually split. You know, when not everyone was playing the same class. Yes. I do like I do like seeing that because it, it shows off just a little bit more variety. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of cool too to see um, how like that one particular build that's being highlighted in the uh, player way can also interact with the different skills of the other classes. It'd be and if the other classes actually or the other players actually start to. Um, push their builds in order to like show off that one build in particular you know yeah yep well ah, let's so, see there's a there's another one uh going through and talking about one that we mentioned um or no that not that we mentioned sorry i i am already forgetting what it is that I'm doing here that <laughs> some people were going through and mentioning um, in the chat earlier about area damage. Yes, area damage uh, mm -hmm. is a thing um, that is in the game that people might forget about besides putting, you know, that 50 points in your Paragon and then going about your business. <laughs> yep. Um, so what someone figured out, I believe it was a barb actually, the first, uh, first forum post that started riling things up in the community um going through people noticed that their area damage wasn't being triggered by the multipliers one of the um you know hallmarks of the ik set for instance is that six piece gives you a multiplier of uh um, two times your damage 100 mm. percent um and so people were seeing like hey my area damage isn't being bolstered by that uh multiplier there and then they went through and tested other multipliers and apparently some of the other ones weren't working with it either so it looks like um area damage is set for set for some fixes it needs a little bit of love yeah yeah and i think that's probably the reason why no one has noticed this until now is just you know area damage itself is a pretty weak stat in comparison not a lot of people gear for it you're because it, it shares it you know it always is going to be something that it shares either with crit or crit damage or you, you got a skill bonus or something and 
area damage is useless against a single target, so when you're going and attacking the majority of Rift bosses, it does nothing for you. And like you said, it's really just something that you spend 50 points on with your Paragons on, you know, on your way to uh, level 800. And you know, it kind of flew under the radar. But they not only, uh, Nevalistus went through and said that they not only kicked the bug over to the quality assurance folks in order to figure out exactly what's going on, uh, but they also want to say that they have, they kind of have uh, some things like in in store for it. They're not, I guess it's what is it? They're they're reviewing the mechanics behind area damage as a whole, and that they sounds like they might have something planned with either buffing that stat or changing the way that it interacts. Maybe we could get area damage to crit on its own or have a small scaler so that way it can proc effects or maybe even pets can proc it you know it's there's some things that they could do to play around with it to make it a little bit more powerful for sure i'm, I'm wondering if it'll ever get to the point where it'll actually be in a fix that we take on gear probably uh, just being just being a realist i don't mm -hmm. foresee that um yeah that that would be one of those ones where one instance that I could see it is if it say if it actually had the ability to proc effects when you're going through and trying to get your best clear times, that could be something. Like if it could proc effects in crit, you could that would be an amazing way to like say spread a pain enhancer if you didn't have like full screen AOEs. Mm -hmm. Or even just something, uh, the bane of the stricken. Should that ever get returned, that would also be another, you know, awesome uh, thing to go and be added in. Or um, actually, even just the way that it might interact with, uh, like, demon hunters. The strafe builds have been using um, focus. It was the uh, evasive fire focus because it's cold damage, and then ice blink. So that way, that cold damage applied to slow. If the area damage could then also proc slows on things to mm. buff up Bane of the Traps. That would sure. be another um, little interesting interaction that they could do with it mm -hmm. just by adding um, a proc coefficient to it. But then also for things that have really high proc coefficients with area damage, you could be leading to some, some very crazy unintended side effects. <laughs> for sure. One yeah. of the things that you mentioned, I actually... Um... In, in terms of why it's kind of bad right now is um, when you get to certain greater rift bosses, for instance, it doesn't do much for you. Yeah, I would, I would like to see it actually get one of the um, uh, changes that we've been seeing with some of the um, legendary powers. If you look at um, what are those called? Nilf Nilfer's Boast, the meteor boots for wizards, mm -hmm. or the uh, bracers for... Ran uh, shucks, I'm so bad right now. Uh, Draken's Lesson, the bracers mm -hmm. for crusaders. Um, where if there aren't a certain amount of enemies around, like if it's three or less or two or less or whatever, it actually gets bonuses increased. So it'd be yep. cool if like your area damage when there's only two, three enemies around or whatever, actually would go up by a certain multiplier or whatever. So it okay. still was a significant source of damage. Yeah. But I mean, that that is one way of going through and doing it. But then like if you were to say, make it so that way area damage could proc on a single enemy, uh, at that point, it's just mathematical. It's just like crit damage. It's like, I'm just going to put it into this formula, and this is exactly how much damage it does. Is it better for me to have it on my gear, or is crit more effective, or is the skill bonus more effective at that point? So it doesn't, it kind of loses that aspect of it being interesting in how, because it's not just like a direct damage boost that you can easily calculate when you're going through and clearing a rift to something that is like, it is just this much damage, end all be all type thing. Hmm. No, that, that is, is a good point. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you'd want to keep it more unique. <laughs> yeah, which, I mean, it's that's just one of the things that you look at, I guess, from like the developer standpoint. Obviously, it would go long ways to fixing the stat and making it something that players would want on their gear. But it also, it's just at that point, it's, it's just another, you know, increases fire damage by 15%. Mm -hmm. it is, it's kind of just what it would end up. Very true. Yeah. One can I can I put the tinfoil hat on for one second here? One thing that kind of bothered me about this post from Nevalistis, um, she was talking about the fact that they didn't want to just do like a band aid fix to area of effect, so they're gonna mm -hmm. you know wait until the next major patch and get a really good fix going for it. Mm -hmm. well, let me read this paragraph, and you can tell me if I if I'm crazy. <clears throat> this is something we intend to fix. Yes. But we're, Okay, I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Right, let's find out why I'm crazy. 
but we're holding off implementing these fixes for the time being as we're reviewing the mechanics of area damage as a whole and we want to avoid introducing sweeping changes in the middle of a season, emphasis added. As a result, changes to area damage will not be coming in patch 2.2.1, but at a later date. And then there's some other sentences. But she says we don't want to introduce sweeping changes in the middle of a season. And then as a result, these changes will not be coming in patch 2.2.1. Sounds to me like we're getting 2.2.1 in the middle of the season. Mm -hmm. Yeah, though I'm not terribly shocked by that for patch 2.2.1 to be in the middle of the season. It's already on the PTR. Um, and it really is just a collection of bug fixes. Hmm, okay. Oh, yeah. that's right. That's, like, I actually forgot that that PTR did go up. You're right. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that, that one is not terribly surprising to me just because there's nothing, there's nothing really mechanically that's going into it. Okay. I just get worried when they're like, we're going to patch in the middle of the season, and all of a sudden, like, something's going to break, something's going to get crazy mm -hmm. buffed, or I don't know, man. I just get nervous. I have yep. season one uh, PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially you know when you have that that little patch. It's the little patch because you know it was two point one point two that screwed everything up. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that, that would yeah I I would say in, in, it's a, inconsequential. Okay. Don't worry about it. Don't All worry. Right. About I'm not worried. You took yeah. you talk me off the fence. All right. Um, but what I do want to point out, though, Nobby in chat is saying, hmm, I wonder if it's a change that might get pushed to the expansion. expansion. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. I mean, that's something that we always have to come back to, right? Because we're still getting closer to Gamescom, and we're wondering if that's going to be the big moment of the unveil for this next next uh, part of the Diablo adventure. Yeah, yeah. I think we talked about a little little bit about that. We mentioned it last episode, and I didn't even put it in the show notes, and here we are talking about it again. <laughs> it works its way back in. Yeah, and uh, we'll, we'll mention this again over towards the end of the show, but also I guess this is a little bit of spoilers. Uh, Leviathan and I were on Realm Maintenance, a uh, podcast about podcasts. Yes. Uh, and you can expect our episode next week, but we also talk, you know, even then we talk more about the... Uh, you know, expansion theories and, you know, conspiracies that are going on behind the scenes, of course. Right, so I guess we can teaser here, keep it light, uh, and then if you want more in-depth, check out that podcast. It'll go live uh, next Tuesday, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, but the only thing I want to say is I kind of want to debunk that area damage uh, fix going into the expansion just because we know that there's going to be a 2.3, and that's where we're going to get, you know, the other sets for the classes that didn't get new sets, so the Crusader, mm -hmm. Witch Doctor, and the one I always forget. Yeah. Um, but I think that's going to come before we get an expansion, so... Just in terms of area damage, I think we will see that fix before we see the expansion, but I do still oh, hope yeah. we see the expansion. Yep, because we will definitely have, you know, they, they've gone through, you know, Wyatt talked about it on the show, 2.3 is something that's going to happen, so it's definitely, there will be, well, expansion or not, there is going to be another major content patch, so uh, I, that would be the most likely scenario of them going and adding uh, that area fix, fix, area damage, fix, fix, <laughs> yeah, let's go with that. Fix, fix, it's fix, a fix, fix. In a fix. Work, work. For a fix for an affix. <laughs> mm -hmm. We did have one more uh, topic that you pulled up. Um, it's one that seems to come up every now and again. I guess, so I'll preface mm -hmm. it by saying, um, I've heard Flux talk about this forever and ever. And he was actually pro this. And so I'm going to unveil what this is. And we're talking about um, elites giving out their orbs in the Greater Rift. So those purple orbs that you have to track down after every fight with an elite. Um, there was a post about it that Nineball fished up, and some guy was just, like, upset about it. It's like, why do we have to go and... Uh, it was the Tias, actually, who's one of the MVPs over there. It's like, why do we have to pick up these globes zigzagging all over the place? Like, why isn't that just baked into killing an elite? And then Tivalier came in and uh, kind of did a discussion about why and current design rewards, etc. That visual reward, that physicality of picking something up and gaining more progress, etc. Um... But when it was uh, the PTR for patch 2.1.2, the orbs were actually dropping in regular rifts for a short portion of time. And people were like, is this a bug? Is this like their way of making uh, normal Nephilim rifts move faster? Or is, is this something and they, intended? And a lot of people loved it. Yeah. A yeah. lot of people were pro, pro it, 
pro more of these globes uh, pushing the progress forward. And I think they do kind of have a nice feeling in terms of you pick them up and you're like, yeah, I'm moving forward. Um, sometimes, uh, I guess, like, one of the things is, like, when you're hurried, you're rushed for time, you know it's going to be a tight clear. One of the things is you miss one and you're like, crap, did I pick it up? Did I not get it? And then you go back to that mm -hmm. room and you did pick it up. And so now you've wasted time. Um, but maybe that's maybe that's just another way that we we get some player execution into the equation, right? Like you have to play well, kind of mm -hmm. time and to some degree you can kind of predict where some of the orbs are going to drop when the elite dies. They tend to like get thrown in certain directions. Um, mm -hmm. And so if you're a player that's cognizant of that, you can actually use it to your advantage to move in the direction as the elite is dying and then get like two orbs. Um, it also gives a bit of... Uh, I guess it gives you a bit of a check in terms of like, hey, you should have some pickup radius so that if you really are concerned about these, you're just going to pick them up with your radius. Yeah, though that one, you know, my personal experience with a lot of them is you're going through, you're running, kind of kill them in a corner. So I know they're either going to spawn right there or maybe like in this direction that like the curve is going. Mm -hmm. And then for whatever reason, they spawn that way. <laughs> you know, and it's just like they, they do something weird. It's like, why are they over there? You know, they just get, kind of get thrown out. So it's it's really hard predicting which direction that they're going to go um, most of the time. And they always seem to want to spawn where you've already been, not the direction that you need to go. Behind you, yeah. Uh, yep. And you know, it's, it's and I, I actually, you know, I like the response that uh, Tyvalier gave and why they don't. Uh, or why mobs do spawn uh, the progress orbs and they're not just baked into the elites. But it is it is an interesting thing because when you look at like the, the leaderboards, you know, people are clearing rifts with nine seconds to spare. That is easily, you know, like two or three elite packs worth of mobs or, you know, that or two or three elite packs worth of orbs, not mobs, <laughs> that spawned in the wrong direction. That's true. You know, that, that's, that's, you know, two those little two or three seconds at a time, that can, you know, affect your standing on the leaderboard, you know, or whether you even manage to clear the rift at all. That's true. I guess I, I will bend a little bit to say that it, they could be a bit more predictable. Um, mm -hmm. it, it also, it actually reminds me of um, some of my complaints that were never aired on the show because it, like, doesn't matter at all. But when you're wearing the gladiator gauntlets for, like, all the two seconds before you get an upgrade above them... They always drop the gold behind you. I actually don't. Even, I haven't worn them in so long. I don't know if they finally changed it. But one of the things that always was really annoying was you get that massacre bonus, and then there's the gold, and you're like, okay, I'm moving this way. But mm -hmm. damn it, my gold's back there. And of course, at that time, it's like you needed gold, you wanted more gold and stuff. And now it's like whatever. Yeah, yeah back when it mattered. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. it's just another one of those things where it's like you could have made uh, the drop a little bit more predictive. And it's tough because your character is always moving, so it like it takes like a snapshot of where you once were and drops that gold there, but it's not going to account for the fact that you just moved with like crazy movement speed, you know, 10 mm -hmm. yards in the other direction. Yeah, and, and Big Tabs is going and mentioning in chat that it always takes ages to spawn, and that, that was one thing that I was just going to go and add on there, is like when you do use those, or I remember when I had like a, a godly pair of them uh, before 2.1, and before they actually made the change, when it used to just like... It, you, it showered gold based on the difficulty that you were in and mm -hmm. all this other types of stuff and it was just broken before they went in and uh, fixed it uh, but it's like you'd go through you'd you know get your enemy kills and such and then like you would have like the the spree counter come up and then you're like okay and then it all pops out <laughs> you know it's like when, when is it gonna go through and then you think you have the timing down and the spree counter pops up and you're running it's like okay i'm gonna stop now because because it is gonna spawn behind me and spawn spawn come on and you know it always just seemed to, to screw with your head about how how long it took for the gold to spawn this is true this is fair Mm -hmm. So I guess, yeah, I kind of threw that out there just to tie it into the idea that maybe these orbs could operate with a similar fix because mm -hmm. we've seen that, that issue already um, and it, it apparently hasn't been fixed yet, but it would be interesting yep. if they could at least make it predictive or just yeah, go like I, in the, well, I guess here's the thing though, right? If you're running a greater rift and it's an open, open er area and you know, there aren't a lot of those to be fair right now in the greater rift pool, but if it's yeah. an open area, which way is forward and which way is back? How does the game yeah. know? Yeah. Or, you know, how would the, the game even know which way is forward, which way is back if it's a loop? I mean that, yeah, that's true too, right? Yeah. 
or if you're going in the wrong direction, you know, something, something along those uh, lines, you know, it's, it's how, how do you change that? You know, I, we, we of course are going and talking about this and we have no idea how the, the mechanics behind orb dropping works when you kill a mob, you know, like what the physics behind it about where it goes and throws it. Should they maybe change it for the progress orb so it always just spawns, say, within 10 yards of where the, the last elite died? Um, mm. You know, and obviously within the game, 10 yards is like that big because your character is like 16 yards. So it's not not a very large distance. It's just, uh, you know, it's just somewhere to keep it more centralized. And then how many hardcore players will complain about that it always spawns in the mob because they died <laughs> picking up their orbs and died to molten. Um, you know, right. it's just there's always little things to to consider in that respect. You know, it's it. I guess it's just one of those ones. It's like that's just that little level of RNG that can kind of make or break you throughout the riffs. And that's that's something I was you know before we go too long in a tooth on it. That was something I was just about to say was uh, it's RNG to some degree. It's another yep. way of them throwing that little uh, thing that we love to hate into the game because um, mm -hmm. you can't predict where they're going to be and you can't predict what gear is going to drop and you can't predict what rolls you'll get. So. To me, it kind of fits into the microcosm of what we're doing here. But yep. I think if you make it predictable in any kind... So we're talking about, like, how does the game know what's forward, how we know what's back. The same idea that you started to get to, like, maybe it always goes to the corpse or something like that. Once you kind of know what to expect, then the player um, the player activity, the, play, the way that the player plays the game will adjust uh, accordingly. And so mm -hmm. at that point, it should cease to be a problem. Yep. And then, you know, to just go through and touch upon it... Uh, you know the Tyvalier going and talking about like the the reason why they drop the uh, the orbs is because player the feedback was when they didn't it didn't feel rewarding. You know if you're going through and they, they you just killed the elite pack and your progress meter just kind of went through and increased a little bit, but when they had the progression orbs actually drop, you felt as if you were getting rewarded because you could see that extra bit of progress even though your your progress bar you know increased more from the elite pack as opposed to a normal it also then you got this huge boost from the the progress orbs and you know it just you felt like yeah i'm doing it i did something i'm doing it i'm doing it uh, uh, but you know you know as they always say sometimes the orb drops in front of you sometimes the orb drops behind you that old saying yep <laughs> just saying just saying uh, All right, so let's get to the title of the show because this is a, a hot topic that's been buzzing uh -huh. throughout the community lately. Um, I think we're seeing more spotlight on these items and we're talking about Hellfire amulets here um, because with, for whatever reason, they just seem to be the best in slot for a lot of the bills that are coming up uh, with the new sets, the reworks to the sets, etc. Um, I feel like it... I know people farmed them in the past in seasons in season two, season one, etc. But it never mm -hmm. seemed like there was such a concentrated focus on Hellfire amulets. And I think now that because a lot of people are out there trying to farm them, um, trying to get those really good GG rolls, the the perfect passives, mm -hmm. um, they're starting to realize that it's a really hard pain. This is something we always talk about when we get them as submissions for items of the week. We're like, whoa, mm -hmm. we know the work that it takes to get there. But now it's becoming kind of commonplace, com uh, commonly accepted that this is just a frustrating uh, process to go through for what seems to be a very low chance for a good reward. Mm -hmm. And I, I do wonder, because a lot of the times previously before, the Hellfire Amulet, you know, was always a good choice because it gave you a free passive but a lot of the builds you know either required you to have you know your set piece for like monks you know the sun will go shine or uh they recommended one of the elemental um immunity ones mm -hmm. you know because that was it. but now things are just going to like such extremes in terms of damage with the greater rifts that we're at that is kind of getting to that point where resistances and survivability if you're not playing hardcore don't matter as much because you're kind of going to get two shot at anyways if you get into a bad engagement nothing will save you right you know the um and you know sorry i always do this with whatever class i'm being favorited of in the season but just going back to demon hunter <laughs> the, the guy that went through and cleared the greater of 60 with the natalia's build you know if you watched his stream and looked at his gear he's got like his highest resist is like 600 wow yeah, because it's just, you know, trying to keep up 
um, smoke screen for as long as he could possibly can, you know, to keep it going for that, you know, that is his survivability, kind of like the season one Marauders just using permanent smoke screen. And it's just that that's what he's going through and using because otherwise, well, everything one shots me anyways, whether I have 500 resist or 2000 resist, it just doesn't matter, Mm -hmm. you know? And so that, that little aspect of like, well, I can survive arcane damage too bad. The thunderstorm, you know, killed me, you know? So that way it's just, it's not, you know, I think we're just seeing kind of like a meta shift from that survivability because, you know, we were, our damage was kind of there yeah, you know, we just had to make sure that we could survive in order to kill the, the greater rift. To where now it's all about, I need every last ounce of DPS in order to go and make it through. And if I die a couple times, I can make it up by doing more damage. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I guess so. One of the things there is that it, it's a soft core thing that's kind of exacerbating the problem um, mm-hmm. because they can push much further and get to that point. Um, something that, and again, like. Uh, I just happened to talk to JH quite a bit today, so I have a couple of um, things on the mind from him. And one of the things we were discussing is Bane of the Trapped is just this insane, like, you have to take this offensive gem because it is just the best one. Um, and what happens when they get rid of Perma CC? Will we actually see more defense? And kind of the conclusion of our conversation was, you know, a dot, 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 let's see. But at the end of the day, it's really the DPS that starts to limit things because, like you've just been saying, you know at some point you're you're not going to be able to mitigate the damage, especially in a timed event. And that's kind of what makes this thing so unique is that mm-hmm. in a timed event, um, you need the damage to push through to complete, the, to actually you know, achieve the goal that you're set out is just beating the timer. Yep. Um, and so you could have all the defense in the world and not die in a greater rift 65 or something, but you're never going to clear it to get that reward on the leaderboard. Mm-hmm. So I think that there definitely is something to be said for uh everyone kind of moving especially with the power creep and moving towards uh a lot more uh, offense i think things that are kind of ancillary in terms of hey this extra passive might give you more conditional damage here or there it's kind of a cool thing to have but it's not necessarily necessary um maybe that's why they're starting to gain a bit more popularity or even if you're just shoving that um cheat death passive to the amulet then that yeah. allows you a little bit more leeway with uh, the passes that you take on your actual bar yeah, exactly. If there is some sort of survivability passive, which is mandatory, you know, just having either having it on the amulet or, you know, getting another good damage passive, you know, is, is just it frees it frees up slots. It gives you more options that you can go through and do by playing around with that fifth passive slot. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, something that's interesting that's happening in the chat right now is people are talking about the immunity amulets versus the hellfire <laughs> amulets and what's going to be better. Um mm-hmm. One thing that we did comment on, I think when Wyatt was on the show, was kind of the buff, the indirect buff to Mars Kaleidoscope because they added um, Hamelin, who's another poison boss. And it, yep. I believe even before Hamelin was there that the majority of bosses, not the majority, but the most bosses um, in terms of elemental damage were poison based. So mm-hmm. you had your uh, your veracity, um, the one that I never remember, Erethon maybe, that spits uh, out poison. Yeah, like SK Hell. Escahel, something, something like that. Like it's that. the the angel. Yeah, exactly. Then you ha- yeah, then you have the choker mm-hmm. and then the the binder. other guy. Yeah, so there you go. Poison as well. Yeah. Yep. So there are a few that you gain um pretty much like a GG fight against once you have the once you line up that poison immunity with that greater rift guardian. But that kind of leads you into fishing, and I guess what what the Hellfire Amulet provides is sort of a bonus that always works, right? So even when you're in a Greater Rift that doesn't necessarily end with you getting that Greater Rift Guardian that would have been perfect for your um, immunity, you still kind of give yourself a fighting chance because you have that power that's going to work based on um, either helping you get to the Greater Rift Guardian faster by clearing the Rift faster or Mm -hmm. um, help you against the Greater Rift Guardian either giving you that sustainability or that one-on-one single target damage that you might have been missing, etc. Yep. And just perfect um, continuing of the conversation there. It's gone mentioning in chat, you know, Uber Uber key farming is as annoying is as annoying as trials. <laughs> That's saying a lot. <laughs> yeah, that that is saying uh, that is saying quite a bit. And that is actually one of the things that kind of sparked this topic mm-hmm. um, for us to even bring up tonight. Uh, I think it spawned from a post that kind of reached the top of Reddit a couple days ago. Sounds right, yeah. Yeah, that was going and talking about the um, 
not directly complaining about making hellfire amulets, but just the severe um, disparity between group farming hellfire amulets yes. and solo farming. Yes. And then kind of, you know, going from there, and it's just kind of felt like, you know, we're, we're seeing more hellfire amulets pop up. You know, it seems to be kind of like we were mentioning a shift in the meta. And then now it's also kind of on the radar of that people are seeing as a something that needs to be fixed. That, you know, it's just it sucks to try and farm them solo. Right. And I guess the, uh, a thing to mention with that is there's this idea that or not idea. There's this uh, actuality that occurred and no one can pinpoint when this happened. But now the key drops are global. And so that means you don't even need to be at the rift at the uh, the key warden when the kill is made. If a key drops, it drops for everyone that's in the game. You could be in Act Five doing, or in Act Five, there is no key warden. You could be in Act One uh, farming your key warden, and Nine Balls in Act Four farming his key warden. He gets one in Act Four. I don't get one in Act One. I poured over to him in Act Four, and even though I wasn't there, I still get the key. Um, no one knows when this happened, but it's a thing now, and uh, it makes it so that. Doing it in groups is by far way more efficient. It wasn't wasn't it that it was added in with the patch like um, two point two or two point one point two patch notes, but then people were saying that it was in before that, like it was a hot fix or a change, but we couldn't find proof of it. My my thought on it is that it was a two part change. I think the first part of it was that if a key dropped, it dropped for everyone, but you still had to be there for the fight. So you had to be yeah. in Act Two, you know, against the key warden to get an Act Two key. But if I got one, you got one too, guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Um, yep. And then I think the second part was it doesn't even matter if you're there, you can still get it. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, going through and uh, Big Tabs is mentioning in chat, you know, it's 16 times the efficiency for a four player group versus solo because not only, you know, does the entire party, it's not just that the whole party gets the keys, it's, I guess it's, it is because the whole party gets <laughs> the keys. So when you complete, when your party completes a set, it's not just uh, one. Um, portal that you can open it's four right yeah so you're going through and then you know so you're going to be going through getting the keys faster you're going to be opening the portals faster uh and then you know just you clear because you have one person in every act attacking each of the key wardens yep. so in the time that it takes one person to go through farm and kill one key warden they've already killed all four yep so they're definitely and this is a conversation that we, we often have uh, in terms of the benefits of solo, the benefits of group play. And some of the, the main proponents of the multiplayer stuff is that this game is a multiplayer game and it's meant to be played with friends and you sh there should be advantages to grouping up. Um, as someone who personally plays solo quite a bit or likes to and has in the past and ha is making an effort to play more in groups this season, I can say that I do note multiplayer just has way more advantages to it like that is definitely a fact um but there should be offsets for solo play so in the same way that you kind of see the whole unity and follower even if it's not a thing that was supposed to be a thing um it's still a nice part of being a solo player because you get that little added protection and if you want to use unity you know like some builds aren't even using it anymore so there's that um but in the same vein it would be nice to see an increased key drop and we kind of talked about this with Wyatt, too, in terms of the uh, upgrade chance for legendary gems. Again, you can push higher mm -hmm. in groups, so you can get better gems higher. And when you mm -hmm. go by yourself, all of a sudden you can't push to that greater rift 60 on your own. So then what do you do with your gems? Nothing. Um, so there just should be a little bit of a bump for that solo play. Yeah, yeah. And that is, it seems to be kind of like, you know, trial trials are vanquished. You know, what else is it that we can focus on that needs to change? What is it that needs to be addressed next? <laughs> yeah, we're going around uh, the horn. I'm, I'm specifically not saying what is it next to complain about because this is a valid concern. There mm -hmm. are a lot of people that will go through play. I mean, you yourself, you know, how many times have you been? Well, obviously, there's only been two other seasons, but how many times have you gone through and you played your Crusader, made it into you know the tops of the leaderboards playing solo? 
and you know what the difference is between being able to do that and how much higher you could have gone if you were in one of those dedicated you know gym leveling groups or if you were able to go through and you know run in a party and gain just obscene amount more experience to get to higher paragon levels to you know up your damage exactly you know so it's just it's some of those things that some of the people do want to compete and are up there on the leaderboards but they might be stuck at like you know, rank 15, rank 20, something along those lines, and they have no hopes of progressing any further because they continue to play solo. And it's just, you know, wanting a little bit more parity between multiplayer and solo play. And this is something that's kind of only now becoming an issue as they've gone and make changes because the developers have slowly slowly been making changes because it used to be it was useless to play multiplayer <laughs> it was more beneficial to play um just solo mm-hmm. so they were making changes okay so now we'll make you know a multiplicative buff w- to experience when you're in a group setting you know we'll change the keys we'll do all these things just so you know you actually had a reason to want to group up and they wanted to make it so that they were there were some there were benefits to playing multiplayer and so if you were rewarded for wanting to play with other people um and that's kind of the developer mindset is they still want that to be more rewarding than playing solo which is fine it's understandable you want a reason to play with your friends you don't want to feel that you're being penalized for playing with your friends sure. but maybe they could go back and adjust or make tweaks so that way it's not as big of a difference as it is now. You know, we're, we're going and we're talking, you know, 10, 15 levels of uh, greater rifts between, you know, some of the class solo clears and some of the higher end four player clears. And, you know, that's, that's a lot of damage. That's an extra oh, yeah. 3% damage on a Bane of the Trapped. You know, it's just it's a, lot of, a lot of things that they can go and, you know, make a little little tiny changes to maybe rein it in a little bit you know it's something that i'm sure is on their radar to go through and address but i guess the one thing is you know to the listeners is just to rein in your expectations just from the design or the development aspect of it they still have to incentivize multiplayer play because if they penalize you for playing in a group then why would you ever want to play with your friends you know, you're always just going to go through and do solo player games. So it always is or always going to be advantages to playing in groups, maybe just not as big of an advantage as there is now. Right. It shouldn't be like up here and down here. Um, yeah. One of the so a couple of things from what you've been saying, um, a, po- a question I posed to you over email when we were discussing talking about this potentially was, is this going to be another one handers versus two handers where mm-hmm. at one point one handers are great. And then they buff two-handers, and now two-handers are the way to go. So what happens to one-handers? You know what I mean? Like, if you decide yeah. to push one-handers back up now, then two-handers become not as good. Um, and, and, I mean, you kind of answer that with saying, like, you know, one will always be better. Most players mm-hmm. will always be better because they want to incentivize um, you playing with your friends. And when you think about what they're doing, too, in terms of development, um, adding clans, adding mm-hmm. uh, communities, things that highlight kind of that uh, social aspect of the game is going to push people towards wanting to play together because it's like, hey, I'm making friends in this community. Dude, I like you. I like you too, man. Let's play together, bro. All right, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. So you want that to be a good feeling. You want to kind of, you know, come away with those stories. It's like, man, I remember four years ago it was you and me in season three, and we were just tearing it up. And you don't want that feeling to be like, man, I remember four years ago it was you and me in season three, and I hated every moment of partying with you because I thought I could be solo and going so much better. So uh, there are reasons um, for for the multiplayer stuff to definitely feel or not to feel to have a slight advantage, but should be slight, not vast. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. Ooh, all right, soapbox completed. Yep, um, and you know, I th- I think it is just you know a good point that you you bring up about the the one hand or two hander is there's there's always going to be a better way of playing. You know, it's trying to get 100% parity and so that everything is balanced between, you know, things being equal. You know, it's like, it's, it's just it's just not going to happen. Agreed. Yeah, you know, it's just, you, you'll never be able to have something just, you know, one-to-one. There's always going to be an advantage this way or that way. You know, so that way, 
you know, it's just it's an unfortunate side effect. So yeah, it's just a reality, really. Mm-hmm. Um. All right. Were there any other big topics or things in terms of community discussions that we want to get into before we got our specifically uh, generated stuff from our player feedback or listener feedback? Um. Well, there was uh, the one thing the uh, the comments about achievements. That's true. Yes. Um, I guess we can quickly go over this one. Um, so this occurred when I was just throwing out a random tweet that said, I don't know how I feel about season three in so many words. It was kind of just like, there's this weird feeling in season three right now. Um, I think honestly, it was just burnout for me. I kind of been playing pretty nonstop, uh, full bore. So I think taking a little step back was what I needed. Um, but I threw that tweet out there and I got a response from Trevor Bell, who's one of our, um, listeners. And he actually set up the EU, uh, West March Workshop community. So if you guys are in the EU, there is a community over there, by the way. Um, mm-hmm. So thank you to him for setting that up. But he mentioned um, he didn't like the way that achievements within seasons felt. He thought that they were a little too pushed towards the hard, the hardcore with a lowercase h, like the more um, players that are just going to grind and grind. It felt very grindy, these new achievements. And mm-hmm. um, you can recall, I believe it was the Tavern Talk where Wyatt mentioned Don Vu went in and like handcrafted hundreds of new achievements specifically for seasons. Um, and they got rid of a lot of the ones that were kind of just, well, not got rid of, but they didn't make the repeats of. You're just earning the ones that you had from non-season for seasons again. Yeah. Um, and so I didn't expect that at all as a thing. I was like, are people talking about this? Is this something? And then Lala chimed in and was saying, yeah, I've seen some things in uh, the forums of people saying, I don't like the new achievements. If they, they do feel too grindy. They feel like um, they're not set up in a way that I want to earn them because I, mm-hmm. I don't, if I target them, it's going to take up all my time, et cetera, et cetera. Um, other, other reasons that I didn't delve too deeply into, but I guess I wanted your feelings on this. Is there something that, um, is this something that you feel too? And, and the difference between achievements and conquests and, and just kind of talk about a little bit, all that. Uh, it's, it is interesting. That was one thing I didn't realize that they had changed the achievements at the very beginning of the season. And so once we hit in the previous seasons, by the time that you hit 70, you know, that's it. You have your 400, um, you know, uh, achievement points. You've unlocked all of the feats of strength. You've gotten all the, the, you know, the transmog rewards and stuff, the, the banner rewards for playing in the season. That's it. You're done. And so I was going through, and I think I was maybe, you know, it was on the Saturday. I hit Paragon 75, and then I'm like, yo, why am I even caring about my Paragon portrait? I can just go through and use the new seasonal one. Mm-hmm. And that's when I went through and checked, and I was like, oh, I have like 80 achievement points. <laughs> you know, it's like, huh, well now. And then I went through and checked and saw that, yeah, so they went through and they completely changed everything um, for this season. You actually had to go and, you know, put, um, you know, put, I wouldn't say like, a real like that much effort into it but you did have to put effort into it to go out and specifically um hunt down certain achievements to get to the 400 points so that way you could get you know your um your uh, portrait and you know the pennant and Mm -hmm. such um so that was that was you know a little bit of a change and at first it was something that i actually liked and i think you know right now i kind of still do i i don't know how much i've been playing this season compared to someone that might be taking it a bit more casually than myself if if that's possible <laughs> uh you know um but just you know just kind of going through and looking at it it, it wasn't you know it wasn't that bad you really you know just going through leveling 70 getting yourself geared up and then going back through and you know killing some of the bosses you know on the specific torment levels this doesn't really take too much of a detour out of your time in order to get it i guess if you are the person maybe it actually is the people that are complaining are the ones that are the, they're more geared towards the the hardcore achievement junkies mm-hmm. that need to complete everything but you know at that point you know, these achievements look easier than completing everything, you know, from the, you know, having to just go through and do everything all over again. From the non-seasonal pool. From the non-seasonal ones. Yeah. So I guess at that, from my viewpoint, you know, as I guess I don't really see that much of a problem with it. You know, obviously conquests uh, are things that you need to like sit down and focus on and change your build, change your gear. I need to specifically go and do this and dedicate a lot of time and effort to it in order to go and get a conquest done. But I also don't see it as a problem of achievements, you know, 
being something that you just get, oh, I got to 70, I've got all my achievement points, so that's it, I'm done. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it does, to me, it doesn't seem bad actually having to go and put a little bit of time and effort in order to, you know, get your 400 seasonal achievement points and get, um, you know, get your, get all of your rewards, you know, for the, the two feats of strength, if, the, if they even keep, you know, that arrangement in the future. Right. There's, there's something to be said about, um, you know, we were seeing, we were getting feedback in season two, I believe it was, um, where people were saying, wait, like, are these just the same achievements from, you know, see, like, is, is there a reason for me to go for these achievements again? And it's like, well, unless you're after that achievement leaderboard, no, not really, yeah. especially if you've earned them, you know, once last season or previous to that, even, um, they're going to be in your account and there's no overlap or anything. So to me, it seems like, well, this is a, this should be a welcome change because now you actually have new achievements to chase specific for seasons. Um, and there are some of them that are kind of like progressional. So you have like your get one gem up to rank 10 or rank 15 or something and onward and so forth. And it actually guides you towards the conquest where you're supposed to get the six gems up to rank 40. Um, so to me, it seems like it's kind of cool that they do intertwine that way when you talk about achievements and conquests. Um, and I guess the problem does arrive, uh, like you were hinting at for those people that are just the true diehard completionists when they want every single achievement, if some of them are that crazy high number, cause we've seen, um, the dev team kind of peel back on some achievements, the, the splinter one, um, yeah. you know, with all killed all the, uh, what are those, the trees in act one, um, even the greater rift ones, it was like, uh, either or not greater sorry regular rifts is like kill a certain amount of monsters inside greater rifts and maybe just complete a certain amount of greater rifts those were dialed back as well um so i feel like it's something that's always a, a bit of a, a whip is my new favorite acronym a work in progress mm -hmm. uh and i think maybe if there is a feeling that i guess you know what they'll probably just look at the metrics and say who completed all the seasonal achievements and of those people you know how many i guess they can't really track how many hours because you can't divvy it up that well but just looking and saying how much of the of the people that maybe completed 50% only did that much and so on. And so there's got to be ways to look at it and determine if um, some of them are hitting the right mark and if some of them could be moved to different sweet spots. Yep, that's those sweet, sweet data points. Mm -hmm. Yep. But yeah, I figured I should at least. It was, it was something that was brought to my attention, so I just wanted to throw it out there. Maybe we'll get some feedback um, from people who have more to say on the subject. Yeah, definitely. That's that's one thing that I'd like to hear back from you know, the viewers and followers of the show. Um, you know, what your thoughts on it? And I know there's some people mentioning in the comments that it just feels like you know it's you're you're kind of like forced into doing like almost nothing but like greater rifts. But you can get more than halfway just by killing bosses if you just go through and kill all the bosses because they're worth forty points each, and there's six achievements for completing all of the boss kills. So you, you have you know two hundred and forty points you know sitting right there. Mm -hmm. And there's something to be said too because there are achievements linked to completing regular rifts uh, for the mm -hmm. different torments at different intervals of time. So you know if you clear mm -hmm. T four in six minutes and you get an achievement for that, it's ten points, etc. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of it is, you know, like I said, you know, it does require a little bit of investment to go through and, you know, you you don't you can't get it. Well, I guess if you're if you're a hardcore player, you will get it just by playing because you're leveling up your gems, you're completing, you know, the higher uh, greater rifts and such. But if you're not going through, you know, to I'm going to I'm tackling the leaderboard type thing, it does require a little bit of investment in going out and doing specific things that I guess that you might not, you know, normally be doing. Mm -hmm. Of, you know, if you're just content to be just running, you know, like torment 6 and, you know, greater rift 30. You know, you'll have to go back and change up a little bit of your play style to do it. Agreed. Agreed. Mm -hmm. But yeah, definitely, uh, if you guys out there have feedback, either on this or, or any of the topics that we just touched on, um, you know, I know there are some feelings out there on the Hellfire stuff, and we didn't even touch the Hellfire ring, which is like, we could talk about that for another 30 minutes. So oh, yeah. definitely send us some feedback, West March Workshop at blizzpro.com. Um, it will be featured in next week's this coming segment, if that makes mm -hmm. sense to you. <laughs> Since we're moving over to the player feedback section of things, um, mm -hmm. we got a couple and, of 
Sorry about and that. Just, Oh yeah, just while just while we're getting onto it, or even seeing some people here, you know, in chat going through and mentioning, you know, it's like uh, if I'm stuck in uh, T1, I'm screwed. I'm on T3 and having issues going through. You know, I guess you know at this point in the season, those are you know, those are pretty much those are valid complaints. Yeah, but you do have, you know, at a minimum three and a half more months. This is true. Yeah, with which to you know to go through and do it. I guess if if you're not. You don't want to play seasons, and you're only doing it in order to get those achievements. I I can definitely feel your complaints, but yeah, if you'd like to expand upon those thoughts and ideas, please, you know, uh, Westmarsh Workshop at BlizzPro.com. We want to hear your feedback. We'd love to hear from you, and you know, tell your story uh, on the show in the in the section that we're just about to get into. Right on. Yes, yes. Now we're heading on over to our player feedback section, and we got a, quite a few entries here. Some really interesting things as well. Um, mm -hmm. We are running a little bit on the time, so we'll try and speed through some, but we, we definitely mm -hmm. will give um, their due, due uh, discussion for a decent amount of these. So let me just go ahead and finish blabbing, and I want to take on one that was sent directly to me, actually. Um, this comes from Crow Mox, and he's, um, he's theory crafting a new set for the Crusaders, because like I have touched on a couple of different episodes, but also earlier today, um, in 2.3, Crusaders will receive a new set, and I've been thinking it's going to be Blessed Hammer. Um, you know, you just mentioned hammers earlier today, and it, it is mm -hmm. kind of one of those beloved... People were so stoked when they saw the, the preview for the Crusader and noticed that Blessed Hammers are going to be coming back. Um, and we don't have anything that really glorifies it yet. So I could definitely see the next set kind of pushing the hammer build. And I mean, we had talked at one point, right? Like the hammer jammers should be part of the Crusader yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. So there's there's definitely some ground for uh, those working in and whatnot. Um, mm -hmm. But um, Chromox goes in a completely different direction. He comes up with the Heaven's Fervor set. Um, and he actually sent me, I'm going to pull this up. He sent me a Google Doc with images and like look this is crazy like the six piece effect like all plotted out and stuff so i kind of want i don't know how to disseminate this but i want to encourage chromox to maybe put up like an official forum post or something just to let uh to let this be a, a thing maybe throw it in the crusader forum somewhere so people can kind of talk about it but it looks like a lot of work went into it so i want to um just have it be a thing that sees more eyes um because people will be listening to this and so they might not see this um but his his basic breakdown of it is that it's going to be a seven-piece set. The two-piece bonus is that hitting an enemy with a generator reduces the cooldown of Falling Sword and Heaven's Fury by one second. The four-piece set bonus is Falling Sword, Fist of the Heavens, and Heaven's Fury deals 150% more damage. And the mm -hmm. six-piece set bonus is that casting Falling Sword, Fist of the Heavens, and Heaven's Fury will create two other corresponding skills either side of the targeted area. So that was that image that you saw with the circles. You know, this is the, the middle ones, your actual effect. And then on both sides, you get a, du a du duplicative effect, essentially, or triplicated, um, mm -hmm. which is kind of cool. And, and we do have a few items as Crusaders that focus on um, each of these skills individually. But having a set that kind of ties it all together and then making those items ancillary parts of this set could be another way to kind of push these forward because right now um let me just make sure i say the right thing yeah two of these are, are very heavy cdr uh based skills so a mm -hmm. lot of cooldown that needs to be reduced to kind of have them up all the time um and then fist of the heavens is just a very heavy wrath costed skill um but all of them are really cool in effect and one of the things that he mentions is um it's supposed to kind of be this feeling of you have different ways to to start battle. To you can be the initiator jumping in with your falling sword, you kind of attack from a distance with your fist of the heavens. You know, Heaven's mm -hmm. Fury kind of does its own thing with its AI targeting, etc. Um, so there there are different ways to play, but it kind of has that same holy feel, the heavens uh, to it. So it'd be kind of it'd be interesting to see some more talk on this and see it evolve. Yeah, definitely. I, I like I like seeing it when people go through and you know they they make their own set or they make their own like way of playing you know they, they, this is this is something that I had an idea they're trying to get into that that mindset of you know what it's like to be a developer mm -hmm. and I mean it's it's worth encouraging because um, at the tavern talk that we just had well not just just had but the most recent one that we had John Yang even said he specifically took the power for um, the gavel of judgment straight from the bard forums so like your ideas are being heard if you throw things out like this that makes sense or that can be refined into making sense for the game it's very mm -hmm. possible that it could could be a thing that exists and how cool it would that be to play your set 
that you created in the game. Yeah, totally. I mean, uh, we were stoked just at having an item with uh, a little flavor text mentioned to us, which right? we're still waiting for. <laughs> you know. Um, yep. Yep. So I, it just being able to actually, you know, see something that you contributed to or some idea that you came up with actually get into the game, that's that's huge. For sure, for sure. Oh, let's see. Going through and taking the next one. Uh, this one comes from uh, Valen. Uh, he is from Croatia. So, you know, another another person that we have from the uh, the other side of the, uh, the Atlantic there. Uh, just wanted to go through and say, just discovered your podcast a few weeks ago and just in time to watch you guys hang out with Wyatt Chang. It was very insightful, and I must say that you guys are freaks, in a good way, of course. <laughs> um, he's been a huge fan of the Diablo universe ever since he played D1 on the PlayStation, which I, want, I specifically picked this one because that was actually my first experience with Diablo as well. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah I didn't play it on the PC. I played Diablo on the PS1. And you know that was that was my experience with it. And it was like, oh, this game is cool. I'll go back to Final Fantasy VII now. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> you know, But yeah, I I feel you on that one. If your your first your first interaction being on the PlayStation, um, and he just wanted to go through and he remembers finding the grandfather being a two handed sword that's one handed, and how awesome that was. And was just wanting to know, you know, he he wants to know. Will Blizzard ever add a legendary power over to the grandfather itself? And, you know, I, I guess the answer to that one is yes. Mm -hmm. Because they're constantly going back and touching on items that don't have, you know, abilities or affixes. So it's something that you could probably expect sometime down the road. You know, don't know if it's, you know, a soon, a Blizzard soon, or a on the radar. You know, it's you know, just one of those that you know, eventually I would expect, yes, it, it would get something added to it. Just probably not, not any time within the next couple patches. That makes sense to me, yeah. Yep, and then you'll probably show this later. He sent in the uh, uh, item of the week. The super secret item of the week. Mm -hmm. Yes, that, that definitely did make the highlights, so we'll be seeing that in a little bit. Um, good stuff. We got a message from Zyathis, and he was just uh, thinking about a new show idea or a new segment for the show, which would mm -hmm. be kind of a obituaries or a, a thing, as long as I say thanking of the dead. <laughs> Thank you for mm -hmm. dying. Here's your story. But yeah, it'd basically just be... Um, Either us or player contributed, hopefully not us anymore, but player contributed. If you, you know, died in some terrible way or some interesting way or funny way, um, sending that in as feedback. And then we would have a little section where we kind of honor those who have passed on um, to the, the halls of, of heroes. And I think that'd be cool. It was something that Dread Scythe did do with his now um, defunct podcast, Scythe mm -hmm. and Shield. So, you know totally being being awesome and just sniping that it's like hey it's a thing that no one does anymore we, we might as well take up that mantle so if you guys if yeah. we get enough entries i suppose we can make it a thing that you know will be part of the feedback and maybe its own section mm -hmm. yeah definitely uh, that would that would be that'd be kind of cool uh, speaker for the dead i like that reference mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh that would, that would bring back some painful memories there <laughs> <laughs> of recent times indeed Yep. Uh, continuing to move on, this one uh, comes from Blizz Junkie. Uh, he wanted to know if uh, anyone is having the same troubles with RNG and Reaper of Souls as I am. He, he specifically goes through and points out that he knows my issues with Tasker and Theo in the past, <laughs> and that he's uh, played a wizard to Paragon 535 almost exclusively in softcore. Uh, he says, sorry, but don't be. This is the way that you want to play. It's how you have fun. That's how you have fun. Uh, but he's never gotten a furnace to drop in all the hours that he's played the game. And he just wants to know, is the RNG weighted or slanted towards certain drops? Um, you know, and he understands that certain ones are meant to be rarer than others, but on the flip side, there are items that are meant to be more common. But in all the thousands of hours that he's played, and no furnace, it just seems like a little strange to him. Um, and then he goes and, you know, uh, this is kind of an idea that we have uh, seen before, that it will something that just keeps track of the number of drops that you get. And so, you know, say I found 500 hammer jammers that 
I can't find anymore. Best day on uh, ever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> until you know, I found five hundred of every other like legendary pants. You know, so it just it turns off certain legendaries because you've had so many of those drop. And um, it's an interesting idea. And so I guess to answer your question um, from the first part is, yeah, RNG is weighted um, very much so in um, the, uh, the drops of a lot of items, uh, especially they actually buffed them in 2.1.2. They used to be, uh, you know, it was like 1 to 10, you'd get 10 common legendaries because it was like, I think that's how it was. In the system, Some, something like that. Like for every yeah. for, for every fifty, you would find ten of something else, or like there yeah. were different tiers. Yeah, because it was like for every hundred like legendaries, you'd find ten. So it, you know, it, it was like one. It was ten to one in the the aspect, but that doesn't necessarily meant that that tenth one that you found was a furnace. It could have been a witching hour or one of the other um, very rare legendaries. You know, and obviously numbers are numbers. You could be one in a hundred you could be one in a thousand when you're dealing with those, those smaller uh drop chances um so you know i've i i have a similar story i you know it's i have a lot of you know played experience on all of my demon hunters i've never found a calamity uh mm-hmm. but and then also i've never found a witching hour and then this season i found four you know, so it's just RNG is RNG. You know, sometimes, you know, this goes, I have, you know, the great stories to tell from World of Warcraft. Farming the uh, Baron Rivendare's mount, it was a 1 in 100% chance to drop. And, you know, this one person in my guild gave up after 320, 320 runs. And then just going through and like doing the math on it, that at a one percent chance to drop, that it was something ridiculous. That like even after doing seven hundred runs, you still only have had like an eighty percent chance to. You only is like a total eighty percent chance to have seen it drop. You know. Yeah. yeah so it's just you know it's like one of those ones is just when you're dealing with small percentages, the variances are killer. And but yeah. You know, just go through, keep on trucking. There's actually another email that we got from here. If you're going through and playing a wizard, I guess kind of rejoice. The furnace isn't the end all be all. <laughs> we'll touch on we'll touch on that other email later to go into it. And but yeah, yeah, there's definitely the nice thing is is you've got other options now. Although I'm sure you probably is just I want that furnace. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't you don't care. You want you it. just want it as as, yep. per, as um, a matter of of thing, the word, yep. the phrase. Um. The the one thing I will comment on too is this is a ridiculous answer to this because it's the complaint, but I'm going to answer it with the complaint is to say that let's say you, you do that implementing 500 thing, it turns off if you get 500. What if you get 500 furnaces and it just turns them off until you find you know that that crush bane? You need 500 yep. crush banes for you to see another furnace. Yep. Ouch. I'm just saying it could happen. <laughs> and those 500 furnaces that you found, none of them were ancient. Right, and they were all yep. lowest rolls and all that good stuff. Yep, so yep. So you do yeah, have to look at both sides. Yep, RNG does not smile upon you, and for that, I am sorry. <laughs> but it will get better because you keep grinding, and eventually things do come. Eventually, things will come. Yeah, as soon as you don't need it anymore, you'll go through and you'll find your ancient, perfectly rolled serpent sparker, and then you'll have a, a furnace. Drink. <laughs> And yeah, so speaking of Serpent Sparkers, I do want to hop on on this grenade um, of feedback that we got because we did yep. offer out some advice that was not the best advice. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. And we did preface it last mm-hmm. last episode by saying that we weren't ex- wizard experts to any by by any stretch of the imagination. So our yep. the things we said could have been a little bad. And actually, we got um, great feedback here from uh, Rabid Shrew who schooled us basically and said that you know right now uh, attack speed is really good for the uh, hydras because of the change that they made to them in one of the recent patches and so now they scale off of attack speed they have breakpoints very similar to your sentries um, back in the dh marauder days and so having a serpent sparker is going to be really good for you as a one-hander simply because you're getting a more uh hydras out but also b it's a fast faster weapon than a furnace any Mm two-hander Um, so attack speed is definitely a concern for wizards, and so that means that furnace will not always be your best bet. And in fact, for the builds that people are running right now, uh, in Talrashes specifically, 
Serpent mm-hmm. Sparker is actually BIS at this point. Yeah. So this one is definitely on me. You know, so that one, uh, this this is one that I screwed up. And, you know, definitely thank you, you know, Rabbit True for coming through, you know, and helping us out there and setting us on the right course. Absolutely. Much mm-hmm. appreciated. Because we're going to get stuff wrong. That's just the way that it works. So um, we appreciate when people give us the feedback. And he did it yeah. in a kind way, too. Uh, just, you know, we, we all learned more here. Oh, yeah, definitely. And, you know, it's, you know, uh, this this season Leviathan's going through um, playing a barb and then secondarying a demon hunter. So far, I've only been playing the demon hunter. So, yeah, you know, we, we definitely will not have the answers to 100 percent, but we'll, we'll try. We'll definitely try harder in the future to, to kind of look into and give you uh, better answers. And if we get it wrong, please call us out on it. We 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 want to be knowledgeable. And we want to give the right answers. And so if we if we give the wrong answer, the only way that we can correct that is to be told absolutely well said good sir um there was another one too that i wanted to take if you don't mind just piggyback onto one by all means all right um this one oh, oh man now i'm forgetting uh oh yes 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 this one came in from scott aka sima um he wanted to say a few different things first was a thank you um just for our enthusiasm about the game um and all the details and things that we go into it's a kind of a counter (laughs) there a little bit um Mm -hmm. but he's just very happy that you know we we throw out the things that we do in terms of the segments and everything and it's actually helped to get him and his two sons one seven one's 14 to have diablo as their family game so they actually play together all the time and they enjoy it quite a bit um and they listen to the podcast while they play um, so thank you for listening and, and using that soundtrack um, to help you guys get through slaying demons. Love it. Um, mm-hmm. He wanted to then uh, pose a question to us on re-rolling. He <laughs> is actually kind of funny and also sad to the person that just submitted that one on the RNG um, because this person finally did find uh, that ancient furnace uh it was on his barb, and he's super mm-hmm. stoked about it. Um, he has had bad beats of RNG, but now this is um, a, a bit of a turnaround on that. And so he wanted to know uh, what to... Let me see here. Um, oh, he didn't re-roll anything because he didn't have a Ramaladni's gift. And mm-hmm. he was just wondering if uh, furnaces are good for barbs right now. And as a barb, to speak to that. Uh, not really. <laughs> the the sad answer is unfortunately not really right now. Unless you're running Raycore, that's probably going to still be where it's BIS. Um, just the new builds that are out there, you're going to be using an IK Boulder Breaker if you're shooting for like the best of the best builds, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you need to work that in, and that takes up your two-hander, that takes up your weapon slot, unfortunately. Um, you could do some... Thing, uh, yeah, I was just gonna say you could do, do uh, could do some things with a mix of like Raycor and IK, which is a build um, I kind of tried to make work in the PTR. But even mm-hmm. still, at that point, you kind of want to leverage the IK Boulder Breaker because it gives you more flexibility for gearing. Um, yeah. But you can fit a furnace into it, so if you wanted to kind of go for that route, that's another way to leverage it. But you need to use a Ring of Royal Grander at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the last thing, there was another piece here was he wanted to talk about rend. Um, it's a, it got a huge, bu- uh, blah, sorry, I'm running out of like stamina for speaking right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> Ren got a great buff in the Wrath of the Waste set where the two piece bonus makes it, um, have its damage increased by 500%. So it just does a ton and it lasts for 15 seconds too. So it's a ton more damage and it sticks around for much longer. And he was wondering with, uh, his lamentation that he got, um, which allows him to apply Ren twice to any enemy. If this is something that people are doing and why he doesn't see it more often and whatnot and it's a good uh two-piece bonus for sure like it definitely will help you kind of move on the dot and go kind of play style which is like you throw the dot down and you can leave because it's going to kill stuff especially if it's like t6 or whatever and you Mm -hmm. have uh, a strong two-hander like the furnace or something uh to that degree um you can dot them up and then you know go on your merry way especially if you're using a pain enhancer and a gem of efficacious toxin like all those dots will just be ticking um, so you can kind of run forward. But uh, the reason that you're not going to see it used, especially with Lamentation, is that it, it kind of all com- boils back down to the IK set. The IK set is really good. Um, and it has, it, specifically, it has uh, pieces of it that don't overlap with other sets. So you can leverage the belt slot and the weapon slot with the IK bonuses. So you're using mm-hmm. your IK tribal binding and your IK uh, boulder breaker to kind of get more bonuses out of it while also wearing the Wrath of the Waste set. And so that means your belt slot will unfortunately not be able to afford a Lamentation. 
Um, and then eventually, too, like once you go up in higher greater rifts, like the rend is like the nice to have, but it's not what's primarily doing all your damage. So you are gonna mm-hmm. kind of want to buff up the tor- the tornadoes, the physical damage, um, the other parts of the build. And that that is the barb lesson for the day. So um, definitely stoked that you're getting the good RNG. You got you know the furnace and stuff, and hopefully that translates into getting more of those wrath of the waste pieces for you and, and moving into some different builds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, going through and moving on. Uh, this one, Sup Fellas. It's your uh, Iron Wolf in the Desolate Sands. We got uh, Psycho going through and uh, giving us another update um, out from his deployment. He just has the odd thought. You have uh, you know, Sergeant Psycho and now you have Lieutenant Lunatic. He's starting to notice a theme here of people going through, writing in, and joining the team. Um <laughs> You know, and he just, uh, he, you know, primarily wanted to go through and, you know, he, he's slowly catching up on our episodes. He just caught the, uh, the Wyatt Chang one. And now his biggest question is, will he, what is he going to be able to do? And will he be able to use all of his trial keystones, you know, by the time that that, that change comes around and that they're not all wasted? Um, uh, but he wanted to also wanted to go through and his last uh, email to us wanted to get some suggestions for what books he should read. Uh, he just finished the Diablo Archive, which is um, the series of novels, like the first uh, the first three novels and the one ebook that got published um, for the Diablo storyline. Um, and he has the other books, which he has sitting um, that he hasn't gotten to yet. And he wanted to mention that he's never felt more connected to or ached for the characters that have been portrayed in a book as the main characters in those four stories. Uh, Norik from uh, Legacy of Blood, uh, Derek from The Black Road, Kentrell from uh, Kingdom of Shadow, and then Sigurd from Demon's Bane, which is the the four uh, books in that novel. And that to him, it's like he could really feel the pain and the loss that they came across during all those books because the you know the stories it's Diablo. You know you don't really have a happy ending. Sure, the good guys won, but at what cost? You know a lot of times mm-hmm. at the end of those books, and so they they <laughs> appear to be painted in you know more like uh realistic colors for how their characters were and you know he just he you know he felt that it was it was really good uh like the just the way that the circumstances are for the characters in particular derek in the black road and sigurd and demon's bane and that they really pose the the eternal question is what would you do if you were in this situation and you know, it's like what what it what it means to be you know to be like a good human or a, a nephilim from you know going from his last email, and it just you know he's uh he's you know going through and just mentioning as for his time in the sands the grind is real and he wished that winter was coming but it is not this day, <laughs> uh, and he just wished us good luck. So yeah, thanks thanks for your uh, your feedback there, Psycho. I'm glad that you liked the books, and um, I can't wait. Until you uh, get into uh, Moon of the Spider, because that was that was actually one of my favorite books there. Nice. Mm-hmm. Those are all still on my list. I'm really bad about reading things these days. Um, so yeah, keep up the good work out in the sands. Um, I have one here that's coming in from Victor, and <laughs> I understand that this uh, he's a European um, listener, and he actually came over from the EU server to the US server uh, to come and party up with some of the people in the clan and whatnot. But he says, stop, fellows, to start his email, which to me is just like, all right, shut down the podcast. Just stop. Uh-huh. <laughs> stop. Stop. Stop it. Mm-hmm. Um, but jokes jokes aside, um, he just wants to comment. He just says he doesn't have a question or a contribution for the show, although this is a contribution. Um, he, he's wondering about the wizard unstable anomaly passive. Doesn't like it. He said he played on a monk for season two and he died a couple of times just because um, the over the overkill of damage with that passive going off. He it didn't save him. It, ha- it was obviously it was one of the ones that were was addressed with this latest patch. Um, but it had a lot of spotlight on it um, from monks that just were foregoing, uh, were foregoing it just because it was that bad. It didn't operate nearly as well as many of the other cheat death passes. Um, and so Victor kind of feels the same way about Unstable Anomaly, that it just doesn't do enough um, and is kind of the least useful of all of them. Um, this is something that we kind of did talk about, or at least we heard um, discussions on previously where 
you know, they want all the passives, the cheat death passives in particular, to feel different from class to class. Like, they all can't just do the same thing because that's, you know, takes out the fantasy. It's kind of boring. I think the mm -hmm. wizard one is kind of cool in that um, it actually activates a skill. Because we've talked about this in the past where, like, you know, the demon hunter one kind of activates that smoke screen. Um, yep. The crusader one kind of gives you the shield that you get um, when you use laws of hope with wings mm -hmm. of valor or wings of angels. Um, and so, which doctor is spirit walk exactly? And so, for the wizards here, they actually use their um wave of force um, to blow back all the enemies when they do hit that death and then pop back up to, I believe, 35% health. Um, but I guess he's he's feeling that like at that point, you're still just on your way to dying because I think you only get like a second or two of immunity. Um, as a as a wizard, I mean, this is again filling at wizard stuff. What is yeah? Actually, I think one of the biggest reasons I don't remember if they changed it in this patch, but it's they didn't actually get any immunity whatsoever previously. I'll uh, go through and just check it real quick. That was the the big one. Okay, if that is yeah, the... it's yeah, it, it has no immunity. It's just a forty five percent heal and a sixty percent slow for three seconds. Anything hit by your wave. So perfect then. That kind of uh, in itself shows why it's not nearly as good as many of the others because they do get that kind of immunity timing or that super damage reduction like the barb gets now um that gives you a little bit of breathing room to get out of a bad situation if you're kind of stuck as a wizard in a bad sitch you're probably going to die in a bad sitch after mm -hmm. that passive goes off so definitely um notable a notable commentary so we'll see yep. if it changes and there was a second part to this and this is something i alluded to previous uh, at the beginning of the show um said maybe something that we could talk about is barbs and t6 regular riffs it's difficult to follow barbs yep. <laughs> is the comment um and he kind of says you know on and on like you could you could continue to talk about this if you want to and i was actually just before the show started reading a reddit post that was saying the exact same thing so this i'm sure is going to bubble up to the surface in the coming days of people being once again upset at the barbs and someone actually dragged up the reasoning on why they changed raycor from what it was with the pull and they were taking mm -hmm. all the enemies with them and was saying like, well, if they thought that that was disruptive gameplay and it wasn't good and that's why they changed it, then why are barbs able to just run through the whole rift by themselves and, and yada yada? And it's a little different because they're not taking all the enemies with them, but they do have one of the fastest movement speeds um, and when you add up everything that they can do, um, rivaled by the NGM build for monks. Because once mm -hmm. they kind of activate their dashing strike for everything, like good luck keeping up, barbs can't keep up with them. Yeah. Um, so there are there's definitely a cause for concern because I've been playing with some of the people in the clan and I feel like people don't like grouping with me. I'm just going to go ahead and put that <laughs> out there. I feel like we do a couple of riffs and everyone's like, all right, I kind of got to go. I got to do it. I'm like, but we were having so much fun. We were having so much fun, you say, when you're like three three rift levels ahead of everybody else. <laughs> I get it's it. Like, like, we'll, just, we'll, just, we'll just teleport to you and pick up the legendaries as the stars drop on the map because <laughs> that's, that's all we see. I get it. Like, it, it sucks to not be part of the fun. And that's why I've always been against um, the the being carried uh, feeling. You know, it's like, hey, yep. I'm in T6 and you're maybe only T3 capable. Let me just carry you through, get you some items. Because you're not doing anything. You really are just picking up the loot. So I yep. can definitely see that. I just don't, like, how do you change it? Like, other, other classes have movement skills. It's just that their movement skills don't also do damage at the same time. Yeah, or they'll be, you know, resource limited. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is which is not something that you really have to worry about so much with the barb, so long as you're hitting things. Everyone else just kind of like, you know, I, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. It's like I gotta, gotta stop and catch my breath here. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I, I I mean it sucks, but it's a reality of of things, and maybe this is the whole like multiplayer versus solo stuff again. And, and maybe if they buff solo, then all the barbs will just go to solo and you don't have to worry about it. But, you know, that's a joking answer. I, I will be curious to see it as it bubbles to the surface more. Um, I don't I don't foresee changes to skills or like giving the barbs like less movement speed on some of the skills that increase it for them. But who knows? Could be singing a different tune by, uh, you know, season four. Yeah, we'll have to see. Mm -hmm. We'll definitely have to see. Uh, this next email comes in. From Ty Bud, the original Sup Fellas. The original. The original. It has been uh, his first thing. It has been a minute or two, hasn't it? It has been far too long is yes. what it has been, sir. Um, it's got a quick question for you. Have you heard anything about the Inno's six-piece set bonus? 
The set seems extremely underwhelming in power at the six-piece set, and uh, it even seems that once that I achieve my six-piece set bonus, all of a sudden my wave of lights are hitting uh, for damn near half of what they used to when I don't have the set bonus. Um, He understands that his mystic allies use the same abilities, but is some of their power taken to them? Is this a bug, or are my pets doing what they should be doing? You know, or is it something that's just to, best to be done by a, a ZDPS monk? And this one is actually something that uh, I've not heard of before because some of the best monk builds out there are the six piece in as four piece on Um Seems to be, you know, like some of the, uh, the big builds going on out there. So that one, I, I'm, I honestly don't know. I don't think that there's. There's any uh, bugs going on there? Yeah, nothing that I've seen. Um, this might be a case where it's a good opportunity to send in a link to a profile and maybe do like an analysis of kind of what's going on with your gear, what's going on with um, just some of the changes and choices that you're making. Because it could just be maybe some affixes on gear that are being changed as you put on your uh, set pieces and maybe you're losing some bonuses that you had previously. So yeah. It could be negatively maybe. affecting your, your output. Yeah, is the damage that you're losing on the character sheet the reason why that it's going through and, you know, not hitting as much, you know, or maybe is it the the allies damage that you're seeing and not your own? Uh, I don't know, maybe the ally doesn't hit for as hard? Yeah, you they, know. they don't, and, and mm-hmm. that's, that's part of it. But, again, like, if you're seeing only that, you shouldn't be only seeing, because if you're seeing numbers at all, you should definitely see your own and your allies as well. Yeah, and then the, yeah, someone in the chat just said that the Mystic Allies hit weaker than you. Um, but yeah, definitely he's going through and saying that your normal skills should never hit weaker. That you might just be seeing your allies crits, but your Mystic Allies will never hit for as much damage as you do. So yeah, there you go. Indeed. Yep, yeah, there's something wrong with your eyes, Ty. Sorry. <laughs> And one of the last ones that I wanted to cover um, is a reroll question. And this is semi barp specific. I'll bring it up here on the screen. It's a Countess Julius cameo that was submitted by Mad Hamster, our, our infamous Hamstergram sender. Our Hamstergrams? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so his question, <clears throat> you're, as you can see on the screen and maybe as you can't see if you're listening, um, it's a Countess Julius cameo. He rolled off the main stat to get 99, 99% uh, per- <laughs> critical hit damage increase. Um, and then there's the attack speed increase by 5% and a native critical hit chance increase by 10% with a socket on there as well. Um, and so his question is, should I re-roll the critical hit damage? for percent elemental damage for my season three barb. And so I saw when this one came in and I thought about it for a little bit and I want to say no for two reasons. I think um, it's it's tough because if you're not using a certain setup, then maybe the answer changes, but because, and he actually has a pain enhancer socketed in here. So that kind of helps to push my first reason forward is if you're going to be using a gem that procs itself off of critical hit chance, then you are going to want to have corresponding critical hit damage because they're going to work in tandem to just elevate your damage output. So it wouldn't really make sense to use a pain enhancer that needs to have critical hits to do its work if you're not also going to have the critical hit damage that benefits from having the higher hit critical hit chance um if you don't use pain enhancer and i think that is one of the main gems that people are using with the physical version of um kind of the six piece wrath four piece ik um then there's probably a potential to think about thunder uh lightning uh, percent here because i know some variations of the build might go in the direction of lightning to utilize um the together as one rune on the call of the ancients which reduces some damage for you but for the most part i think you're going to be better off with the critical hit damage here i don't know if you have anything else that i haven't thought of with this one nine ball um yeah i'm actually i'm going through and uh seeing if i can find a uh calculator because there are some guides out there i mean you know critical hit damage is like one of your biggest damage increases you know but it all kind of comes down to it's not just a hundred percent more critical hit damage if you already have 500 percent crit damage you know this is this is only a 20 percent increase and if you have 
zero elemental damage and all of your damage is fire, adding you know like the twenty percent fire damage is also a twenty percent increase. Mm-hmm. You know that, that that type of thing that is just it, it kind of comes down to numbers. You know, I wish I could find a calculator easy as I'm going through and you know, searching around. Though I'm you know just given you know how high your crit damage has to be without you know, factoring in the amulet, I'll probably say that the crit damage is going to be best on this. That's, that's yeah, my leaning as well, too. Yeah. Just because it, it's hard, because you, you have to have an insane amount of crit damage on all the rest of your gear for the 100% on the amulet to not be worth more than the 20% elemental damage. <laughs> and, and even then, you know, you have to have 0% elemental damage on the rest of your gear as well. To get the true 20% increase. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's things to consider, but that calculators definitely help answer these questions. There is a lot of theory crafting you can do, but at the end of the day, the numbers kind of rule the answer. So, um, yeah, and this also kind of goes back to a, a question that I got on Twitter this last week um, from uh, Sean. You know, he wanted to know what the best way to re-roll one of his weapons was because he found like an ancient Donetta's and he wanted to know what the best way to re-roll it and it's like well going through and looking at it you know it's like uh, you you just want to re-roll the weapon damage because that will give you more than going and adding the 10% you know damage bonus so, like re-rolling the, da- the damage affix then adding on the 10% damage bonus but then it's like hold on I put it into the calculator and the damage was like 30 damage or something like that so it's just you know it, it is it Weapon damage, rerolling the base damage will be more, though the amount of times and max that you're going to actually going through to get that better roll as opposed to just going in the 10% damage, you know, they're really close, you know, so it's uh, it's up to you at that point how much you want to go and worry about rerolling it. Yeah. And then the advice was all for naught because then he found a Kreider shot. <laughs> GG. GG. I ran into a similar issue too because I managed to replace my ancient IK Boulder Breaker last night um, as I was doing a Greater Rift. And uh, it rolled decently, but it was really low base damage for an ancient weapon. And I think I would have gotten more out of it looking back on the um, choice that I made by just re rolling the base. But it had an affix that was just like going to be completely useless. So it made sense to me to take off the useless affix. So I'm still going to have a base damage. Like it's just not going to be as high as it potentially could be. Um, and you put the 10% on there. And that way I felt like I would be leveraging all my fixes better versus, you know, making the damage on it higher. And I, to this point, I still don't even know if it was the right choice, but it just seemed to kind of make sense in terms of utilizing everything on the weapon um, as best as I could. And it kind of gives me an option to, to go back and um change that affix if i ever want if i decide like eh, i don't even care about the damage i just want like another utility thing on here versus if i roll the base damage if you try and go to a different affix like it, it'll drop to like 300 dps or something you know so sometimes sometimes considering what you yeah. re-roll um based on future needs or whatever can also make a difference yeah um but talking about items are we ready to move into items of the week Oh, yeah. Yeah, we are. All right. And uh, going through, I think I found a calculator here. Okay. I would still need to know, um, I'd still have to see the rest of his character uh, in order to actually put the stats in and see for certain. But yeah, it's like you have to have... You have to have like zero percent elemental damage and somewhere near, you know, 400 percent critical hit damage without that item. Right. in order for it to be equivalent and it is possible for barbs um if they're going with the mm-hmm. two hand if the one hander the bk mighty weapons for instance because then you get two and then you have double double emeralds yeah yep so yeah so that yeah that definitely is one if you if you will be able to better answer that if you send us a link to your gear there it is mm-hmm um, which he did in chat, but oh, for, there the, we go. for the interest of moving the show forward. Maybe yeah, you can... go through and show those items, and I'm going to go and uh, tweak with numbers. All right. So I'm going to move to the items of the week, and we got quite a few, so I actually had to limit them this week. Um, thank you guys so much for doing some crazy farming this season. It's clearly paying off. We'll start out with our mandatory ancient furnace that we received. Um, this one came in from Power Axes, and he literally said, like, here is your ancient furnace for this week. You better show it, or something to that degree. Um, so here she is. It's got 4,158 DPS. 
uh, a rerolled attack speed on here, interestingly enough. It is an intelligence furnace. He's got 1,324 int on there, um, and then a life per hit affix, uh, 33,115 to be specific. His legendary power with the increased damage against elites is 42%, so a little on the low side. And the secondary is uh, granting some experience on monster kill, so you know that'll be helpful inside of those greater rifts. Um, and then, of course, the good old Happy Meal, making this weapon very happy by feeding it and getting a socket in return. Uh, so thank you, Power Axis, for submitting this to us. I'm going to assume this is probably for a pet witch doctor um, that maybe hasn't found like a star metal or something yet, since the attack speed would help with um, getting those peeps to attack a little faster. Yeah, definitely. It's a... Uh... Nice, nice fill in for that. Although the furnace still does very well if you're playing Jade. Oh, uh, truth. Uh, yeah, but uh, even at that point, you don't really care about attack speed all that much. This is also true. Yep. Uh, for that, it would yeah. If, if he if he is if you are you know running Jade and using a furnace, you'd want cooldown reduction. There you go. You have options, Mister Power Axis. Yep. As long as you well, don't die with this. Yeah, as long as you don't die with it. <laughs> All right, we're going to move next to um, a tweet submission. This was from at Osmodius, which I'm probably murdering, but I actually know him from uh, the Ink Gamer days. He appears on some of their podcasts as well. I played with him in a couple of games um, back in the day, maybe like season one or even before seasons were a thing. But he submitted an ancient blade of prophecy, and I felt really bad because this is an amazing ancient blade, but it's just one season too late. Because Crusaders are on, they're moving over to that Roland set, and Blade is not going to do much for you over there. But we will still uh, highlight this because it is awesome. So it's 4135.5 mm -hmm. DPS. Nothing re-rolled on this yet, by the way. Um, he has 6% damage affix on there. 1,386 vitality. A perfect 10% uh, cooldown reduction. And then the secondary, um, as you know, the two Condemns coming from one Condemn, and then the... Uh, other secondary here is life after each kill, 14,000, looks like 983. Mm -hmm. And um, the the most obvious thing to do here is to take that vit and turn it into strength. Strength, so yeah. Got a good weapon on hand. Yep, throw on a happy meal. Throw on a happy meal and you'll be happy. Yep. Before we go on to the next item, uh, Mad Hamster went through, did the, the numbers, and yeah, the critical hit damage for what your character stats are, it, it is above and beyond better than elemental percentage. Boom! Nailed yeah. it. I like that long form, kind of taking something from you know a point in the show, and we, we, we got to the answer at the end. Yep, there we go. I like it, following through. So there it is. Uh, next up on the screen here, we have a restraint, just a regular old restraint. But man, these rings, restraint and focus, are seeing a lot of play right now uh, in mm -hmm. seasons and or in non seasons too, just because that rework to their power is absolutely awesome. We should talk about that at some point. I think we have just a, we scraped the surface on it, but we should maybe do like a full segment at some point. Oh, yeah. Um, but this is from Dark Mage, and he was super elated because he's had a focus forever, but never any restraint. Very, very focused on finding a restraint. Yep. Um, but he got this one, and it, it's a beaut. Nothing re-rolled on it yet, and he's got 466 dex, 49% critical hit damage, a perfect 6% critical hit chance, and then on secondary, he's got some poison resistance, 141, and then some extra gold from monsters, because who doesn't always need more gold? And of course, there's a socket on here, which he has a Bane of the Trapped in. So I'm thinking some DH action is going down here. Yeah, yeah, for uh, and for a DH, it, it, the dexterity, it depends on what build that you want to do. Um, if you want to do Natalia's, that dexterity should become cooldown reduction. There you go. Mm -hmm. And then you'll be on your way. Coming up next, Flying D. Watch out for that D, it's flying towards you. I'm so sorry. Are you talking about the same thing anymore? <laughs> I am so sorry. <laughs> this show just got R-rated. Um, hide your kids, hide your wife. <laughs> uh, -huh. uh, anyway, um, before this gets any more awkward, this is Valen's flying dragon that he was, um, that Nineball was hinting at, um, from his email earlier in the feedback section. Uh, it's ancient, 4,376.3 DPS on it. He rerolled, uh, 10% damage affix. It's got 1,364 dex, 1,419 vitality, and, uh, secondary of 27 max spirit. 
additional and the legendary power on this for those who aren't familiar a chance to double your attack speed when attacking and he did use a happy meal on here to get a socket mm -hmm. um one of the things that i wanted to offer up here is that i've noticed monks um have really good damage output at this point with the dashing strike build and this is this is one of the best in slot weapons if not the best in slot weapon for the new dashing strike meta that they're experiencing right now um Apparently the damage is really good, but some of the sustainability of the build isn't quite there. So what's been a common um, thing to do is actually roll something like a life per spirit spent or a life per hit onto your flying dragon, actually, as one of the affixes mm -hmm. um, to kind of get you staying in the battle. Because when that second, when that legendary power ramps up, like you can dash and strike so, so much and that dash and strike outputs crazy, crazy numbers. So as long as you can stay alive to do it. Dead DPS is bad DPS or something like that. Yep. You can't DPS when you're dead. That's right. But either way, amazing weapon. Thank you for submitting that, Valen. Uh, we're moving along. We have a couple more. Um, this is our ancient Ring of Royal Grander that was submitted via Twitter from at Dark Garage. If your garage is dark, you just turn on the light, man. <laughs> <laughs> even I mean, heck, even the uh, garage door openers—they've they, got a little light when the motor starts running. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, there's so many ways. Uh, <laughs> in any case, this is a great piece of jewelry that he has found for himself. Again, ancient, so it's got 627 strength, six percent attack speed increase, which is one of those mandatory affixes that comes with. Um, he got a perfect 50% critical hit damage increase. And he rolled off the other mandatory one that comes on there, which is the life per hit. Life on a hit. Yep. Yeah, put that into a socket. Um, he's got a tie hook in there that is unranked. Kind of crazy. Um, and then the secondary is 209 physical resistance. And everyone's familiar with what the Ring of Orb Grander does. So this is pretty sweet. And with the tie hook in there, it seems to me it's going to be a barb. Although I'm, I could imagine working that into the Crusader playstyle too. So mm -hmm. um, with Roland's, that is. It's, it's definitely a staple in Condemn. But congrats on that. It's pretty crazy. He actually got a reply from the Diablo account that was saying that this is an awesome item. So you know you're validated <laughs> when Diablo yes. himself is saying you have a good item. Yep. Uh, on next, in continuing the vein of the popularity of barbs, we have an Immortal King's Boulder Breaker that is ancient. And this one's actually a submission from Mad Hamster. So he's appearing again all over the place. Um, this one has 3,901.7 DPS with nothing yet re-rolled onto it. Um, it's got 1,302 strength, 1,368 vitality, and the call of the Ancients damage, it ranges from 45 to 60%. He's got a 49% increased damage on this one. And the secondary is it always comes with Ignore's durability loss, and then his other secondary is 21 plus maximum fury and uh it does come with five affixes so he rolled one of them into a socket and i recall the email said that he would roll that socket into something else likely that 10 percent damage affix um when he gets a ronald mcdonald's happy meal mm -hmm. gift so not too shabby lots of potential here it's got a really high base damage roll 1793 to 2230 um uh, thing goes to like to 18 high 1800 and uh low 2300 so it's pretty mm -hmm. solid range very nice yeah i am jelly and oh that was it wait there that we can't are be it uh-oh oh there was one other item that i actually let me finagle this because it, it was a beautiful um what is it called corrupted ashbringer and i guess the image file probably didn't translate to xsplit here so i'm just gonna hop into the email that sent it over and show it to you guys here it's not going to be the best, but we will make it work. Um, let me just set it up real quick. If you want to say something cool, that would be cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. I've got it up on screen. Thank you for that intermission there, Nine. I <laughs> really appreciate that. <laughs> Always count on me. <laughs> uh, so Cristiano sent in this corrupted Ashbringer that is just bananas. Uh, it's an ancient one uh, with 4,688 dps uh it's being bolstered by an increased attack speed affix um by seven percent which is the max on that he rolled the ten percent uh damage affix onto there 1309 intelligence and then some of the other things that come with it ten percent damage to undead and some life after each kill 15,487 and unfortunately 
his uh, percent for the when it transforms is a little low. It ranges from 5,000 to 6,000. Yep. And this one's only 5,025%. So scrape in the bottom of the barrel, but still an amazing uh, damage roll on here. So Yeah. I wonder if they'll ever let you, like in the, the future, like re roll your legendary affix. That would be compelling. You know, what What happens if you have, like, the item roll, like, perfectly, but then your your actual, the legendary property itself rolled horribly? Right. You know, you know, it's like, you have nothing to re-roll on it, you know, I might, it's kind of like, well, do I re-roll, like, a secondary stat or something? Or I, I'd love to be able to re-roll that, that, uh, that affix, you know, in order to get up, like, the 6,000 damage or something along those lines. Maybe this is even where they introduce a new gift. The gift of legendary affix rerolling, uh, name pending, and name. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yeah, thank you. Obviously, it wouldn't work for all of them because, like, for instance, the flying dragon doesn't have a modifier in terms of its uh, percentage or anything like that. But it could be cool for the ones that do. Just mm -hmm. something, uh, something to uh, make the gearing game a little more compelling. Yeah. But that's it, man. We got through the items. They were insane. Keep them coming, people. Uh, Westmarch Workshop at blizzpro.com for the feedback, items, anything that you want to get off your chest. Crazy designs for plans on sets or things that you have. Love to see those, that stuff. You can also mm -hmm. tweet at us, the WM Workshop. We are actively monitoring that at all times. Um, and obviously, we do pull items and things from there, too. So wherever you guys feel like sounding off, do it. Yeah, let us know. Let your let your voice be heard. And of course, you can go through and uh, if you want to chat with us directly, you can always catch us. I'm at Nine Ball Gamer on Twitter, and uh, Leviathan is at S A Stewart one one one. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I guess we're we're wrapping things up here. So, Mister Nine Ball, thoughts, feelings, questions. Ah, oh, feeling feeling good, feeling good. You know, it's like one of those ones, you know, have accomplished a lot in the season so far and still have a couple more months ahead of us. Yeah, the sky's so the limit, really. Yeah, pretty much. You know, how far can you take it? Absolutely. You know, after getting those, the conquest, it, it was like a, a breath of, I don't even know, a sigh of relief Um, just because it felt like we were going so, like, hard, like, go, go, go. We got to, because mm -hmm. the conquests are those things where it's like you want to get as high on those leaderboards because the spots are so limited. Um, mm -hmm. when you feel like you really need to push the the start of that season, but then once it's done, you kind of sit back. You're like, "All right, it's vacation time. Now you can do time. whatever you want." Yeah, you know. Yeah, like, just level up some gems, play with some alts, take a day off. What? Yeah. Well, what do we do now? Now we play the game, Kyle. <laughs> now we play the game. <laughs> there it is, man. So yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to just kind of messing around now. I did start tinkering on the DH a little bit. A little yeah, bit. I'm liking it. So I want to definitely get Nats going and rival you with some crazy strafing and things like that it's a fun build but it gives you carpal tunnel oh boy yep gonna have to get the old wrist ready mm -hmm. before that goes anywhere dirty i'm just gonna go ahead and start the outro music <laughs> thank you it guys. didn't become dirty till you mentioned it yeah you know sometimes that happens yeah sometimes <laughs> but thank you guys so so much for joining us on another lovely episode of the west march workshop we're so happy to have you here in chat and for those of you that aren't here right now or in the future when you're on the next show please feel free to join us it's every wednesday 6 p.m pacific uh 9 p.m eastern and that's located at twitch.tv slash leviathan111. Uh, if you want to catch just the video, VOD, you know, you, you don't got, ain't nobody got time to hang out with you guys for two hours on a Wednesday night, then go ahead and catch that on YouTube. That's S.A. Stewart 1 and the Blizz Pro account. Uh, it gets cross-posted to both. We, of course, have our beautiful audio versions that Nineball takes care of. They go iTunes and Stitcher. We have the in-game community right now that's been buzzing and hopping, people sharing keys, um, sharing bounty caches, so definitely feel free to join there for a little leg up on your characters. That's um, West March Workshop in-game, both here and in the EU as well. Yep. Other than that, I got nothing else for you guys. I want to go grind. Yeah. Yeah. Or we should probably start pushing the raid call so people can just come hang out and chat, whether you're in the clan or not. Absolutely. You know what? That would be great. And... I should have those numbers offhand, but I don't. Mm -hmm. Next time. On Gadget, next time. <laughs> Tune in for all the goodies. <laughs>